It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with The Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, November 1st, 2021. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well on this beautiful Monday morning, Monday afternoon here in New York City. It is a great time to be alive, my friends. The weather is just a little crisper. Halloween yesterday. Happy Halloween to all those who celebrated. Like I said, my daughter turned five. Fantastic UFC card on Saturday. We're back to normal UFC in the Big Apple early November. As the, the leaves are falling and the colors are changing, they'll be at the Mecca, the world's most famous arena, the home of the number one team in the National Basketball Association, your New York Knickerbockers this Saturday. The show is flowing. We've got big news today on the program. We've got big guests on the program. We've got a lot to talk about. we got a lot to discuss. We have a lot to reveal. We have wall of fame ceremonies we have a reunion on the program three plus years since we said goodbye on this set almost two years since i last saw the man in person your friend and mine new york rick back on the show in a different role in a different capacity but back on the show he'll join me in studio later in the program new yorker yes in case you've been living under a rock now a member of the MMA fighting team, what is old is new again. I tell you, if I'm such a bad guy to work with, no, I'm just, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go there. Cease fire, okay? I'm not gonna go there. But yes, New York Rick, now a member of the MMA fighting team, social media director of the squad. We about to take things up a notch. I'm, I feel the nachas in my soul. I feel the happiness in my heart. There is so much going on, so much good vibes in here. It's just, it's a beautiful time to be alive. It really is. And I talk about good vibes Saturday night in Abu Dhabi. And of course, before I get to Saturday afternoon in Abu Dhabi, I do have to remind you all that today's program is brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and please use the code Hour for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook, please do support them because they support us. Saturday afternoon in Abu Dhabi was fantastic. Glory to share. 42 years young becomes the undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion, the second oldest champion in UFC history. Number two behind the great Randy Couture, who did it back at UFC 68, Columbus, Ohio, Tim Sylvia, 43. This man, number two, Glory to share, who was at one point. The best fighter to never fight in the UFC or one of the best fighters probably behind Fyodor, number two behind Fyodor, to never fight in the UFC, couldn't get into the UFC, couldn't get into the States because of visa issues, came to America to, 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 to follow a dream, worked as a landscaper, was, was, was Glover Teixeira, excuse me, was Chuck Liddell's secret weapon, got his shot in the UFC, started out great, met John Jones, uh, lost at UFC 172 in Baltimore, Maryland. After that, was a bit up and down, and since then, he has gone on a roll in the twilight, supposedly, of his career at 42, submits Jan Bochovic in the second round. Credit to Jan, an incredible run and an incredible story in his own right, but he said it on Saturday. He left the legendary Polish power in his hotel room. The better man that night was Glover Teixeira, and I think... It's one of those cases where everyone's happy for Jan that he got this opportunity and everyone's happy for Glover that at the very end of his career, he's getting this opportunity. And let's not say that he is finishing his career. He's not walking away as champion. Up next is a really tough guy named Yeri Pochaska. So it doesn't get easier from here. But the fact that Glover got to taste gold is a really freaking big deal. So happy for him. Of course, we'll talk about Glover throughout the program. There he is. What a sight. Abu Dhabi. Great moment. What a fight Piotr Jan versus Corey Sanhagen was for the interim title. Piotr Jan gets to be champion again, and hopefully now we get the unification bout against Aljamain Sterling. And we'll be talking to both guys on the program. What a sight it was with Islam Makhachev completely mauling Dan Hooker. All due respect to Dan Hooker, an absolute legend. 
his stock doesn't get hurt at all, doesn't get hit at all, but Issa Machachev is on the cusp of doing something great, fulfilling his own destiny. Is he fighting Benil Dariush next? Is he fighting the winner of Chandler Gaethje next? Is he fighting for the belt next? We can discuss that on this program. And what about the return of Hamza Chemayev, the wolf, uh, with a great perform, a fantastic performance against Li Zhang Liang. Picks him up, slams him with shades of Matt Hughes and Frank Trigg back in the day. He's talking to Dana White. An absolute mauling. This is a scary man. Scary, scary man. Scary Hamza at hours when he's in there. Good to see him back. A little komsi komsa on the scale, for being honest. But hey, he got it done. He made it happen. A great moment. All in all, it was a great card. And those are all great moments. But my friends, you all know what the number one moment of UFC 267 was. We infiltrated the machine. We put out the offer last week on this program. And we said what? If anyone walks out to Island Boy, Island boy, we talking about island boy, we talking about island. If anyone walks out to it, you will be immortalized on the most prestigious wall in mixed martial arts. Not the staircase at the apex, not the staircase at the PI, this wall right here with the gods of MMA. Sean Brady put it out there. Andre Petrovsky fumbled the bag. Now, he had a great night, but you know he won, yes, but he won't be immortalized. And then from the darkness comes Virna Janjiroba, who GC, with all due respect to GC, laughed at the thought of Virna Janjiroba walking out to Island Boy. She comes out, and I got to say, I was nervous. I was anxious. I didn't know if it would actually happen. I didn't know if it would come to fruition. I was really nervous. I thought, pe I thought there were people on the inside trying to ruin this moment for all of us. Y'all can keep your tweets on the screen from now until eternity. We will forever have... An MMA hour walkout in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Remember, 10 years ago or so, I tried to get Matt Mitrion to shout us out. He didn't follow through. We did one better. We had an MMA hour walkout. And so there she was, Virna Janjiroba, walking out to the remix, dancing, living life. Yeah, sure, they no-sold it on the broadcast. Yeah, sure, I gave, you know, DC you know, a piece of my mind afterwards. I mean, we could have got, could have dropped the reference and have to say my name, we could drop, you know what? That's me being greedy. And so never say that I am not a man of my word because here we have, thank you to Alex for printing this up, Virna Janjiroba's face on a beautiful framed little thingy here. Look at this, print it out. Look at that, Virna Janjiroba. And so without further ado, Thank you for the beautiful music, Frank. It is time to immortalize Virna Janjiroba. Yes, she lost a very close fight to Amanda Hibas, but if you ask me, there were no losers that night. Amanda Hibas won the fight. Virna Janjiroba gets immortalized. And so without further ado, I will go over here. I will take off my headset and I will put Virna Janjiroba up on the wall with the gods of MMA. How does that look? I mean, how does that look? We're just going to need you to repeat what you said when you were over there. No, I will not repeat what I said. In fact, what I said was, never say that I don't live up to my word. Virna Janjiroba. Get another shot of it, Tucker. Go ahead. There it is. Look at that. Forever immortalized. She will never be forgotten. Absolutely never be forgotten. It was a great moment. It probably was my favorite moment of my career. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. Thank you to Virna. Thank you to Tiago. And look, I'll just say, I think we elevated the interest in that fight on the prelims. That we probably, you know, spiked the ratings on ESPN, ESPN Plus. And so I'll just be sitting here and waiting for my thank you. <laughs> One more shot of Virna if we can. Oh, there, I mean, look at that. I mean, that is just amazing. Virna, welcome to the club. Welcome to the gods of MMA. Welcome to the most pre prestigious wall in the history of this tremendous sport, mixed martial arts. It is beautiful, is it not? And so look, I said it. You didn't believe, you guys did not believe that I would follow through and here I am following through. And so without further ado, 
as we transition from that amazing moment, which has gotten me a little bit choked up. Later in the program, uh, we'll have New York Rick in studio, the reunion that the whole entire MMA world is talking about. It will actually happen. Yes, he is here in the flesh. We will check in with GC to recap his great weekend of bets. We will talk to Anthony Smith, get his take on the main event this past Saturday. Glover was flying home, so unfortunately he couldn't join us today, but he told me he'll join us on Wednesday, so we'll see if he's a man of his word, the new champion, or if he forgot about the little people. Anthony Smith, Aljamain Sterling, we'll talk about, of course, the co-main event between uh, Piotr Jan and Corey Sanhagen. What a tremendous fight that was, one of the best fights of the year. Lerone Murphy will make his debut on the program. I can't wait to talk to him. He had an amazing win over Makwan Amir Khani. Dan Hardy, one of the best analysts, of course, one of the best minds in the game, will join us as well. But first, without further ado, let us talk to the man who was uh, one half of what I thought the best fight of the night. It was an incredible fight. Back and forth they went. But again, Piotr Jan reminds us that he is the king of the bantamweights, that he should be champion, and we hope that we finally get that unification bout so we can settle the score once and for all between him and Aljamain Sterling. He is kind enough now to join us via the Magic of Zoom, first up on the program, the brand new UFC interim bantamweight champion, Piotr Jan. Piotr, my friend, how are you? Spasiba. How are you? Everything good. I, thank you, thank you. Yes, last week you said maybe you're too busy to come on the show, but I knew you wanted to come back as champion, right? You had to come back. Yes, I got to see you. I back now in NAF champion. No mercy. I'm here. It's blessed time for me. It's a beautiful time, and I think you're being joined by your manager, uh, Sayat. Right? Is is Sayat there as well? Yeah, yes, yeah, Sayat. Sayat here. Yes, yeah, Syed, who I thought was the MVP of the night. Syed was there translating for all the Russian uh, winners. And then, of course, he was there by your side when you won as well. Uh, Piotr, let me ask you, when you were given the belt um, after the great fight against Corey Sanhagen, did it feel like when you won the belt for the first time? Did it feel the same? Did it feel different? How do you feel about being called interim champion now and not undisputed champion? Когда на тебя Дэна Уайт повесил пояс, у тебя такие же были чувства, когда ты первый раз выиграл пояс, и то, что тебя называют там временным чемпионом, какие у тебя чувства это вызывает? Да, конечно, было очень приятно, но первый раз, когда это было в 2020 году, это было как-то более для меня что-то новое. Сейчас, в принципе, это было ожидаемо уже. И я верил в это, и я визуализировал этот момент, что я побью его. И когда одевал да на пояс, я уже чувствовал себя таким, знаешь, опытным хищником, который находится на своем месте. You know, of course, first time was a special one for me because it was the first time, and I never had this feeling before. Uh, but this weekend it was nice too. But I felt like already like an experienced predator who already got what he deserved to get. And uh, before the fight, I was expecting it. I was visualizing it. So I just got what I wanted. I felt, despite the frustrations of what happened back in March, you handled the aftermath very well. But now do you feel, because you got at least one half of the title, do you, do you feel like you can put March behind you and you can, you know, resume your life as champion. Does this help you get over the incident that happened back in March? Он говорит, что в марте э, ты достаточно хорошо себя повел после того, как бой закончился, ну, э, как бы ситуацию контролировал пос, э, все события после боя. И то, что сейчас на тебя надели пояс, э, помогает ли тебе двигаться дальше и вообще полностью забыть то, что было в марте? Да, конечно, этот момент, то, что сейчас у меня пояс, я понимаю, что говорят временный титул, но он имеет все те же самые функции, что и настоящий пояс. Вот. Просто я думаю, что как только появится возможность побить Стерлинга, я сделаю это еще в более доминирующей манере, и тогда точно не будет никакого вопроса. Yes, of course, it helps to move on. I know they call it interim belt, but in fact, it has all the functions of the real belt too. And of course, when I get the chance and opportunity to beat up Sterling again, I will do it in a more dominant way so to leave no doubts who the real champion is. By the way, when you say it has all the functions of the real belt, that means pay-per-view points back again, right? 
снова, говорит, pay per view будет платить. Yes, I did. Yes. I like it. It's good. It's good, Peter. I like it very much. Now, I noticed that Joe Martinez, when you won, said two-time champion. Did you notice that? He didn't call you interim champion. He called you two-time bantamweight champion. Did you notice this? Тот, кто ринг анонсер, он тебя назвал двукратным чемпионом, когда тебе пояс надевали. Ты это заметил или нет? Услышал? Да, да, я услышал это. Я услышал это. Я надеюсь, что он не ошибся. Yes, I heard it. I hope he didn't make a mistake. He did it on purpose. <laughs> uh, can I, what, a, what a great fight, Peter. I thought you won four rounds to one. I thought he won the first round, and then you won two, three, four, and five. What adjustments did you and your coaches make going from round one to round two, and then, of course, three, four, and five as well, to not replicate what happened in the in the first round? Он считает, что ты выиграл четыре раунда к одному. Кори выиграл первый раунд и что ты именно э, исправил, добавил между раундами твой тренерский состав, либо ты что-то поменял, чтобы не повторилось то, что было в первом раунде? Ну, то, что первый раунд он выиграл, мы просто отдали его, дали ему выиграть этот раунд. В принципе, у нас было, у меня было понимание такое, что я буду давить, буду дергать, буду где-то контратаковать, буду... Э, но задачи не было прям. Я работал на 30% своих возможностей первые два раунда. Все остальные раунды я также начал по чуть-чуть по чуть добавлять, но по своим кондициям, по своему самочувствию я выложился всего на 70% от своих возможностей. You know, the only reason he won the first round because I gave it away. Uh, my goal was just to pressure, counter punch a little bit, but I used only like 30% of my abilities in the first two rounds. And then uh, my goal was to add, add more with each round. But I believe I ended, ended this fight with only 70% of my abilities, of my cardio and conditioning, you know. Wow. Просто первые раунды я понимал, мне нужно было собирать информацию, понять, как он двигается, в какие стороны, как он вообще ведет себя, когда его, когда прессингует его. Просто... You know, first round, I only used, you know, to uh, learn how he moves, how he reacts, you know, to gain the data. And after that, I can use this uh, knowledge against him in later rounds. Did you feel like he got tired? And I think the suggestion was thrown out that perhaps because he took this fight on short notice, he didn't have the cardio that he would if he had a full camp. Did you feel round four or five that he was getting tired? Почувствовал ли ты, что он устал уже где-то около четвертого раунда? Возможно, из-за того, что у него был короткий лагерь. Как говорят, ты сам это почувствовал в поединке, что он устал? Конечно, он не пропустил много ударов тоже. Что вы думаете, все удары, которые я ему пробивал по корпусу, по голове, они тоже забирают силы. Это не так-то просто. Вот. Плюс он всегда находился в напряжении, потому что тебя его всегда давили, на нем висел соперник. Он от этого тоже очень сильно уставал. А, касаемо его лагеря, я думаю, что он дрался совсем недавно, 5 раундов, и он, наоборот, чувствовал себя в разы лучше, чем я, потому что он прошел недавно эту дистанцию, продышался. Для него это были только плюсы. You know, you don't have to take your race from my punches to the body, to the head, you know, it, it have it effect on him. And then... Uh... Of course, uh, the pressure, constantly being under pressure, you know, it takes away a lot of your energy. And But him having the five-round fight just recently, I think just only helped him. I think he just passed this distance recently, so he had advantage in this uh, in, the, uh, in this thing. Were you surprised you hit him with some big shots, like you said, to the body and the face um, consistently? Were you surprised he didn't go down? Were you thinking to yourself, man, this guy's got a tough chin, he's got a tough body. Был ли ты удивлен, что ты его все-таки не удосрочил, потому что ты хорошо попадал и по корпусу, и в голове? То есть по ходу боя, может, ты удивлялся, насколько он крепкий? Ну, он, он крепкий парень, он хороший, хороший, достойный соперник. Но, в принципе, не было таких моментов, чтобы я по нему сильно плотно попал. Я попадал по нему, но это были не те удары. Я, в принципе, понимал, что он держит... He's a tough guy. Yeah, he's a tough guy and good opponent. 
Uh, I did land some good shots, but I didn't uh, land with my best shots, you know. So, so maybe I didn't uh, do enough, you know, to finish him. Um, the, the, the fight was very impressive. Your performance was very impressive. Also very impressive, Piotr, was your tan. People are now calling you Piotr Tan because you, your, your tan was fantastic. Where is this from? Is this from your time in Dubai or was it uh, uh, prior to the fight? I mean, I just thought everything about you looked fantastic on Saturday. Please tell us. Бой был очень удивительный, но еще был также удивительный твой загар. Люди тебя теперь называют Петр Загорелый. Расскажи, откуда этот загар из твоего времени в Дубае, пока ты был? Да, конечно. Я не только тренировался здесь, я еще и загорал немножко. Yes, of course. I did only train here in Dubai, but also got some tan. Yes, because I know in Siberia they don't have a lot of tan. You know, there's not a lot of tanning in Siberia, so it, it was very apparent that you had spent some time over there. Uh, you had mentioned to us last week on the show, Peter, that you hadn't seen your family in two months. And so it was very nice for those that heard that for you to be with your wife and your son. By the way, your son might be the coolest kid that I've ever seen. I mean, he's got the zig in his hair. He's got the cool outfit. How old is your son, by the way? Он говорит, у тебя сын один из самых крутых детей, которых видел. Сколько ему лет? Это мой старший сын, ему пять лет. Yes, this is my oldest son. He is uh, five years old. Uh, what was it like for you to be reunited with them after being away uh, from them for two months? Каково было для тебя снова с ними увидеться после того, как ты их не видел два месяца? Это было очень круто. Они прилетели 29 числа после моего взвешивания. Я восстанавливался. После мы с ними увиделись. Для меня была такая дополнительная приятная энергия. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, they came right after the weighing ceremony. You know, for me, it was uh, additional motivation and extra energy for me. Do you believe that you will fight Aljamain Sterling next? Веришь ли то, что все-таки Стерлинг будет следующим? Если будет, то будет. Я побью его. If he will be next, I will beat him up. If it's not going to be him, I'm not going to be too upset. I'll just beat someone else up. When would you like to fight again? Because I think everyone wants to know what, what the deadline is. And I think at this point, it might be up to you. So when would you like to fight again? Когда бы ты хотел в следующий раз подраться? В любом случае, должен быть какой-то срок, дедлайн. И, возможно, сейчас это ты уже решаешь, когда должен быть бой. Я, честно, пока не знаю, но я готов. Буду подраться. Я занят сейчас, извините. Этот, э, я думаю, что февраль, март – идеальное время. Uh, to be honest, I don't know yet, but uh, probably February or March will be will be perfect. There has to be a part of you that would like to resolve this once and for all. I know you say you're kind of indifferent, but to to clear it once and for all to fight the man and end it in a proper way that has to be a top priority for you right наверняка все-таки частичка тебя все все же хочет поставить точку в этом противостоянии как ты думаешь ну я думаю что в принципе это будет громкое громкое противостояние во-первых ну это ожидаемо все ждут Поэтому, безусловно, точку мы поставим, если оно будет. И опять же, для себя, я побил его уже, в принципе, раз. У меня нет большого, там, так скажем, желания. Но когда у меня будет контракт на бой, я буду максимально сфокусирован. Yeah, yeah of course, I, I understand that now it's an even bigger fight and people expect it to see it again. And uh, even though... I believe I already beat him up, beat him up once, but once I will sign the contract, I will be 100 100% focused to do it again. Okay. So просто в этот раз, в этот раз, если все не жалко его, я могу его травмировать очень сильно. But uh, this time I'm gonna hurt him real bad this time. Do Do you think he's going to try and find a way out of the fight? Как ты думаешь, он захочет найти способ опять уйти от боя? Я у него в голове это тысячу процентов. 
<laughs> I live inside his head. It's 1,000%. <laughs> so you believe that? You believe he will try and find a way out? То есть ты веришь в то, что он все-таки может убежать? Человек, убежавший раз, все время будет куда-то бежать дважды. The man who ran away once, you know, can, will always run again. Okay, so then let me ask you, and then I'll let you go. Uh, your his, uh, oh, go his, 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 his hair, how chicken hair is, it's very small. <laughs> Your prediction as to who you will fight next? Who do you think it will ultimately be? Твой прогноз, кто ты следующий соперник? Ариэль, я всегда говорил, мне без разницы. Пояс у меня, перперью у меня, любого. Ариэль, as I said before, I don't care who's next. You know, now I have the belt, I have the perperview, give me anyone. Okay, last question, and it's the most important one. Did you meet Hasbullah and Abdul? And if so, whose team are you on? Are you on team Hasbullah or are you on team Abdul? Видел ли ты там Хазбика, Абдурозика и на чьей стороне? Нет, нет, никого не видел, никого не видел. No, I didn't see anyone. You didn't see those guys? They were everywhere. Everyone took a picture with them. You want nothing? Я не видел, я дрался тогда. Yeah, I was fighting as a time. I didn't pay attention. Good man, good man, Peter. Good man, respect. Respect to you, Peter. Uh, Spasiba, congratulations. Very happy for you. Thank and, you. And uh, your son, I have to say, I'm very impressed with him. I have, I have little children too, but I mean, the, the Z on the head, the outfit, well done, my friend. You you did a great job with your son. It was very, it was very nice. I like. I love it. Yeah, he said uh, his son, he's the one who wanted to do the, the haircut and the thing. It was his choice. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell him. He's even cooler than I thought. Amazing. Uh, thank you for the time. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. And uh, Sayat, thank you to you as well. And great job on Saturday. Yeah, same thank for you. Thank, you. thank you. Talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, bye Peter, bye, bye, by bye. the way, you want to say anything to Aljo? He's coming on. You want to say anything to him? He's he's up in an hour. You want to send him a message? Сейчас после тебя Стерлинг будет давать интервью. Хочешь ему пару слов сказать? Арель, это чикан в бане конкретно. Просто не грамма, просто побью его, уничтожу его. You know, I, I will just beat this chicken up and I will destroy him. Nothing to say. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Спасибо. Bye-bye. All Thank right. You. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. There he is, the brand new interim uh, UFC bantamweight champion. Peter Jan. Did the lights go off in back of me here? Or am I just dreaming of something? Did something just happen? Yeah, we made an adjustment. Oh wow! Look at that. Um, I like it. It feels uh, it feels like Broadway. I did notice Joe Martinez, and by the way, shout out to the great Boost Buffer who missed his first numbered UFC event, first time since UFC 12 that Bruce Buffer was not in the middle of the cage doing the announcements and all that stuff. Um, he unfortunately got COVID, but he's feeling better now. And he told me last week he will be there this weekend at the Mecca. At the home, your first place, Knicks, Madison Square Garden. So he'll be back. Joe Martinez, of course, a legend in his own right, does a fantastic job. Former voice PA announcer, whatever you want to call it, cage announcer of uh, World Extreme Cage Fighting. Uh, he did a very good job filling in. And I don't know if it was an error. I don't know if it was on purpose. But he did say two-time champ. Now, of course, officially, Al Jermaine is the champion. And Piotr is the bantamweight champion. And uh, the good thing about controversy is that it makes the rematch that much bigger. And so I think Aljamain Sterling versus Piotr Jan will be one of the biggest bantamweight title fights of all time. There have been big ones. Uh, TJ Henenborough too was a big one. TJ Dominic Cruz was a really big one. Um, Cody TJ. One and two, big ones. One felt bigger than, than two, if I'm being honest. But now Piotr Jan versus Aljamain Sterling is going to be a really big one as well. And so uh, I am looking forward to that. And hopefully we get it March, April, sometime like that. But I mean, this man is incredible. And I think a lot of people would argue right now he is the best bantamweight on the planet, regardless of if he's the interim champion or not. All right. Uh, thank you very much to Piotr Jan and uh, his man, Sayat. Um, 
He actually has two managers, Syed and Danny Rubenstein. Danny Rubenstein was in Abu Dhabi. His client, longtime friend, Joanne Calderwood, got married on Saturday to her coach, John Wood, who's a mensch of a man as well. Danny chose to go to the fight and not the wedding. I mean, if I'm being honest, I, very nice, but I mean, that's a wedding. I mean, it's a wet, you, cho you chose the business over. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that, but the mazel tov to uh, Joanne Calderwood, one of the nicest human beings that you'll ever meet. And uh, I wish her and John a lifetime of happiness. Now, uh, a lot of you very excited, very happy to hear from our next guest, one of the brightest minds in the history of MMA. He is killing it on his own uh, channel on BT Sport. He's doing a bunch of stuff. And I uh, wanted to have him on to talk a bit about UFC 267, uh, perhaps a little 268 talk, but about his own career as well. And so without further ado, it has been a while since I got a chance to talk to the outlaw, Dan Hardy. Let us say hello to the one and only Dan Hardy, who's kind of joined us from the familiar spot. I love it. This is great. Dan, how are you? I'm good, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Long time no speak, my friend. And uh, really nice to see you. And you're doing fantastic work. Really, really great stuff. The the breakdowns for BT obviously are incredible. The stuff on your YouTube channel, incredible as well. So just wanted to say off the bat, kudos and great to see you still forging on and doing it your way. Well, that's what we do, right? We, we love MMA and, and we, uh, you know, we dedicate our lives to it some, some way, however we can. And yeah, it, you know, I, I love, I love doing the breakdowns. I appreciate all the people that tune in and watch them and, and support the shows because, uh, you know, it, it's a, not everyone wants to listen to one person talk for 45 minutes about a fight. I'm amazed that there's a there's such a big audience for it. So I'm, I'm thankful for them. Yeah, there's an audience. There's an anticipation. People really look forward to it. And uh, obviously, BT, they do a great job uh, with those as well. Can I ask you, Dan, um, obviously, you know, well-documented, your departure from the UFC, and we don't need to get into all of that. You've talked about it ad nauseum. But... Um, to do your own thing sort of on the side and not be a part of the shows and whatnot. Do you, do you have FOMO when there, you know, there's an event in Abu Dhabi, which you may have been called upon to do. Like, how do you feel? Because look, take it from me. I know what that is like, right? You were, you were in the machine, you're out of the machine. You were more in the machine than I was because you were actually on the broadcast. But can you describe the emotions when you watch these events? You're still very, you know, visible. You're still a part of it. The fans love your stuff, but the actual event itself, what is it like for you to watch them? Yeah, I mean, it, it's very bittersweet. Of course, you know, I, I love the UFC. I always will. I love MMA and, you know, I follow the sport just across the board. But yeah, I mean, there is a bit of a a, a bit of a, a sour taste in my mouth when I'm watching the UFC events now because it's just like the, the way that it all kind of played out was it, it was unnecessary. It seemed very vindictive. So, you know, I just kind of sit on the outside now and, and, and watch and just, I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't have liked to have been in Fight Island. You know, I started to feel quite anxious in the couple of weeks leading up to it. Like I would like I was going out there because it was it was a very stressful environment. You know, the the, the three times, three four times I was out there. You know, the first one was fine because we had loads of space, but it got more restrictive and more oppressive, and it was a, a very stressful place. So I, I was thankful to not be there. But to not be at UFC events is is uh, you know I, I would like to have been in in New York for this weekend. That would have been a good one, but. You know, I'm Bellator this weekend. Instead, you know, think things change. We we walk down different paths, and lots of things have opened up to me. So I'm thankful for that. Wait a second, Dan. Is that breaking news? You're doing the Bellator. Have you done? What, what do you mean your Bellator this weekend? They're in <laughs> Dublin, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just I'm flying over to, to watch the event. I, I've I've not been to to watch a Bellator event as a fan before. If ever I've been there, it's always been in somebody's corner or or something. So it's. You know, I've just fancied going over. I know it's going to be an amazing event. Obviously, there's some some really great fights on the card. Queeley and Gallagher are going to take the roof off the arena. And, you know, I've had a couple of really good nights in that arena as well. That's where uh, uh, McGregor knocked out uh, Brandau. Yep. And, you know, what an iconic event that was. It was that was a pleasure to be a part of. So it'd be good to be a, you know, be a fan at an event again. Wait a second, Dan. You're just going as a spectator? I don't buy this for one yeah. second. They're going to have one of the best minds in MMA just sitting in the stands and have some other jabron up on the on the desk over there talking fights? I don't buy this for a second. <laughs> well, I, I might have a couple of conversations with them, but oh. honestly, I've, I've got so many doors open at the moment. I'm not committing to any direction, but um, the, there's, there's lots of good things happening in mixed martial arts. I mean, you're across everything, so you know what's going on behind the scenes as well as uh, out in the public eye. Um, Lots of it exciting things going on. But I was also at my cardiologist this morning because I've been in conversation with one about getting matched and they wanted a, a fresh set of cardiology results. So 
I've got, you know, clearance to fight there as well. And there's boxing matches being offered. And I don't know what 2022 holds, but um, I'm excited for it. And, you know, I will be a part of Bellator, you know, perhaps somehow in the future, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so let me ask you about the fighting, because I've obviously heard you talk about it. And I know about the reason why you had to walk away um, somewhat prematurely because of the heart. Why do you even want to do this? 2012 was your last fight. 10 years, you've got a great path for you here. You're doing the breakdowns. You're very well respected. Uh, I know there's a thrill that, you know, fighting uh, brings to you and is unmatched, you know, being behind a desk or a microphone. It's not the same. But wh- why go through this all over again? You're out. You survived. You're doing well. Why Why the need for this? Because because I'm, I'm a martial artist and I'm, I'm still my brain still still going 100 miles an hour every day. I'm still thinking and, and learning and, and trying new things. And, you know, I. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm 40 next year, but I'm not, I'm not old by any means. You know, I've, I've never had a surgery. I've never broken a major bone. You know, I'm, I'm in, I've never, I've only been knocked out once. That was one, one good clean shot from Condit. You know, aside from that, I'm, I'm in really good health. And if I've got opportunities to go and test myself and you know, this is the thing I'm not, I'm not in this to try and prove anything to anybody. That's This is a forum for me to test myself. You know, I've got opportunities like fighting John Wayne Parr or, you know, Nikki Holskin or, you know, Tyron Woodley or whoever, you know, these are, these are, you know, legitimate martial artists and good fighters, people that I would be able to test my skills against. And in a few years time, I'll probably be too old to be doing it. You know, we've, we've seen that with some of the older guys that are stepping back in there. Time does pass you by. And I don't feel right now that it has. I've probably got another couple of years before, uh, you know, I start to really think about hanging it up. But why not with, with some of the off and you know, I've, I'm, I'm free of the UFC. I'm, I've been released from my fight contract as well as everything else. So I have options now and I can consider them. But isn't there something to be said as someone who knows fighting so well, 10 years is a long time to be away. I mean, 10 years from anything, right? Basketball, baseball, so- it, from anything, it's hard to, and you have a standard, I think you say you've only been knocked out once. That was UFC 120, Carl's Condit, but you went, uh, a trem- I mean, GSP couldn't finish you. We remember all the great moments. 10 years is a long time. There's no part of you that feels like, you know what, 10 years, that's a long time to be away. I may not come back as the outlaw that people once knew and loved, and I don't want to ruin that. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of the point. I, I mean, there's, there's, not, there's not loads to ruin. It's not, not like I was a, you know, a multiple-time world champion. You know, I, I had a good run. I felt like it was cut short, and, and my martial arts journey is still continuing. And, and this is why I'm not, I'm, not going, I'm not planning on getting in the mix and fighting for championships or anything like that. I mean, you know, the reality is if they offered me a title shot in, in uh, you know, one of the top divisions, I'd probably take it. But that's just me being me. You know, I'm realistic about the people that I want to fight. You know, John Wayne Parr is older than me. Nikki Holskin's the same age as me. You know, Tyron Woodley's the same age as me. You know, th- there are a lot of options of, of people that are good challenges. I mean, you know, the, the one I always really wanted was Nick Diaz. You know, and I mentioned that to the UFC several times. That You know, it, that was a fight I wanted. Matt Brown. I'm not being unrealistic. I'm not trying to step back in at the top 10 and think right. I'm, I'm comparable to these, you know, like 30 year olds, 28 year olds. Cause, cause of course I'm not, I'm, I am, you know, I've, I've been watching the sport very closely and I'm, I know where I'm competitive and where I'm not. So what I would like is to be able to step in there against, you know, highly respectable, well-trained, well-established martial artists that are going to be able to push me not only in a fight, but also through a training camp. Because, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm 40 next year. So why not Why not give it one last little go and, and just kind of have some fun with it? I, I'm, pr- I'm trying to prove nothing other than what I've grown uh, in myself as a martial artist. And so those of us who have been watching you and watching the sport for a long time remember around 10 years ago when you had to walk away, um, it was the heart issue. What was the official name of the issue that you had? Um, well, I mean, it's it's called Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome, but I, I don't have that because I ne- I've never been I've never been symptomatic. Um, I have Wolf Parkinson White pattern, but now I've been well three times to the cardiologist now, and every single time it's not showing up since since that first time before the Matt Brown fight. Um, so I, I mean, I, I have a clean bill of health. I actually don't have anything. It, it's for whatever reason showed up on an exam that I had back in Vegas in 2013, and has not shown itself since. Um, I mean, so that's, it, it, it took me down a different path in my, in my career. And I'm thankful for that because I have grown a lot, but I have also, you know, I, I missed the opportunity to have a few fights that I, w- I think would have, would have, uh, you know, grown me as, as a person and a martial artist. Wow. That's fascinating. Cause I was just about to ask, like, do you, do you have regret 
Do you, do you think back, if I could have fought another five years, I could have kept going? I mean, who knows? You could have gotten another title shot, et cetera, et cetera. Do you, uh, do you find yourself dreaming about that and, you know, kind of like sliding doors, right? That famous film where it's like, oh, you, you, you go down this path or that path. Unfortunately, you had to go down this path, which you then capitalized on and were able to adapt. But do you think a lot about what if that didn't show up in that exam around uh, nine or so years ago? Yeah, yes, I, I do, of course, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't regret it. I mean, I mean, the, the thing is, I grew so much in the, in the following few years, I, like my mind grew and my goal when I first got into this, when I was like, you know, well, maybe not when I was six years old, it was more about being, being a Ninja Turtle. But, you know, as, as I got into like my, my mid teens, I started to realize that my goal was to try and be as good as I could be, you know, as good a martial artist as I could be. And I, I mean, I was that all the way through my career. I just think that there was more to it. And I grew a lot by sitting on the side and watching, by taking myself out of the equation. You know, I can watch, like, I realized I was watching Robbie Lawler and uh, and Rory McDonald, and I wasn't putting myself in the fight. And I think that was the first time I'd ever done that. And being removed from the sport and being forced to kind of step to one side uh, put me in a different place mentally. You know, I watched that fight and I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm now no longer involving myself in this. I'm no longer watching this through the lens of my, my fighter ego. I can, I can watch these guys like realistically and clearly and see a lot more. So I've actually learned a lot more than I thought I, thought I would. I mean, I, I've said it to my fighters in the gym. I'd say it to any young fighter. If there comes a point in your career where you have to, you know, sit aside for six to 12 months and recover, you know, physically or, you know, like maybe a concussion or something, be obsessive about the sport as a fan because you can gain so much from, from watching and learning. And, and you know, I, I feel like I've, I've grown a lot because of that, but I never got the opportunities to step back in there and try it out. I mean, I watch my old fights now. I watched my last fight against Amir and, you know, it, it, was, it was a fun fight and I enjoyed it, but I, I cringe at my performance because I, it's, it's a fraction of what I feel like I'm capable of. So I don't really feel like I showed what I'm, what I can, what I'm truly um, able to do as a martial artist. And I, you know, I'd quite like to try one more time. Okay. And so is it just for one time? Well, I'll see. I, I'm, th- I'm thinking more, it's going to be more limited by time. I, I might give it another 12 or 18 months and see what I can do in that time. But as of right now, I've got, I've got five good options. Um, one, one kickboxing, uh, one Muay Thai with small gloves, one Muay Thai with big gloves, uh, one boxing match with big gloves, and maybe a fight with no gloves. Um, so, that they're all good options, all, all fights, all opponents, every single one of them, the names you would know. So, I, you know, I'm going in there to, to, to see, you know, see where my level's at and see, um, you know, see what I've gained in these last 10 years sitting on the sidelines. What's interesting about those five options is there's no MMA in those five that you just mentioned. So are we done with MMA? Okay. Okay. Then there's a, there's a six option. Okay. Oh, interesting. For MMA. Okay. That's, that's dependent on the, on two of the others. So we'll see. Like the thing, the other thing as well is there's different rule sets. You know, I love what one championship are doing with the small gloves Muay Thai. I like the fact they've got kickboxing alongside it and guys are, are bouncing from one to the next. I like these these kind of feature bouts that are coming up. You know, not not all of them necessarily. I didn't need to see Evander Holyfield, but right. I don't mind, you know, the, the Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley fights. And I, I'm, I'm interested to watch them because I'm watching two people, you know, in a high pressure situation have to overcome one another with with combat I, I mean that's always interesting to me um so i like the variety that we've got now you know when i stepped out of the sport there, were, there was a lot less going on outside and now a lot more is going on and I'm, I'm enjoying you know i'm enjoying being across it a lot more is there one atop the leaderboard as of right this moment is there is there a favorite yeah uh, tyron woodley and boxing I am, I am speaking to the promoter later today and I'm, I'm hoping that he's, he's been in touch and he's signed the contract because I know he's got a contract and I know he's agreed terms. I know he's agreed the date and the money and the rounds and everything. All he needs to do is sign it and then we can get started. Uh, all my medicals are, are, are done now. So, you know, he, he literally has no excuse. So a boxing match against Tyron Woodley, uh, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, this wouldn't be a part of the whole Jake Paul. This is a separate thing happening in the UK, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's, I think the date the date's in March, but I, I don't know. I don't have a great deal more details to give you. I'll, I'll let them announce the event when when it's time. Who's the promoter? Um, as soon as that, that uh, ink is dry, then uh, they'll be able to. Who's the promoter? 
I'm, I, I, I'm not giving any. Uh, I'm not giving any information right yeah, now. I'm waiting yeah. for Tyrone to sign that contract, and then, and then then I'll let the promoter do what their what their job is. How confident are you that this actually comes to fruition? Uh, I'm confident that I'll fight. I'm not confident that Tyrone Woodley would sign a contract to fight me, though. Which Why? is exactly my point, really. I mean, my 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 point was not to get a fight out of him. I just. He's, he's always been a bit sensitive. I criticized him once in the past when he was defending his UFC title. And, you know, like I, I wouldn't want to be a champion that has the last 15 minutes of my fights booed because I'm, you know, a, rubbing my back foot up against the fence. Like I, it just bores me. And, and, you know, as a fan, I want to, as a fan, I want to love the sport. And he, you know, he made me annoyed at times when he was fighting because I didn't feel like he wanted to be in there. And then he did that same thing against Jake Paul. And he's he's always he's always been been sensitive to to what I've said about him for whatever reason. So the so obvious thing is, you know, if, if I want to prove that he's not a fighter, I'll have to fight him. And everything's been agreed now. It, it, all, all he needs to do is just do it. And are they talking to his side as well? This isn't just something where you're like, hey, I want to fight you. Like there's actual real conversations happening. Yeah, they have. He has a contract. Okay, he has a contract. He's read it. He's agreed. He said he'll he'll do the fight. He just needs to sign the actual paperwork. Just curious, why boxing and not say MMA, which is what you two are both most known for? Because that's what was offered. To be honest, okay, that's what was offered. I mean, I'm not really I, I'm not really bothered the skill set. I, I'm I like the idea of fighting within a restricted skill set, whatever that is. But I don't really care. I mean, every single one of the opponents that I've been offered, I would fight them under any rules that they want. Um, it's more about it's more about the, the the challenge of beating the person than anything. Um, so I mean, we can we can do what DJ and, and um, uh, Rod Tang are doing if he wants, and we'll just we'll alternate. We'll even drop a round of chess in there so he can have a breather. Uh, um, and uh, so if you, I, I, the understanding is UK, but like if you went to Nevada, if you went to California, if you went to New Jersey, New York, you would have no problem getting licensed at this point is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. And you're um, all good. Got, the, the clearance that I needed was, was for one championship. So I, I'm sending that over to them later today. As I said, I did the, I did the exams at nine o'clock this morning. So um, everything's kind of, you know, everything's kind of fresh and, and still on its way in emails, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm cleared. I'm, I'm hundred percent cleared to fight under any rule set. Wow. That is incredible. When you see Glover Teixeira at 42, win a UFC title, what does that, what does that do to you? How does that make you feel as someone who's about to turn 40, as you said? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch. It, it's amazing to watch. I'm so proud. Of, I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed for Jan as well. It's one of those kind of fights. You didn't really want to see the guy lose, you know, I just yeah. love them both so much, but I mean, just, it, it, incredible, you know, it, incredible. And, and to, you know, to stay dedicated and to stay present in the sport that whole time. Um, it always astounds me, you know, guys like Alistair Overeem and stuff that are still going, it just, it's incredible. I don't know where they find the motivation because I I think if I'd have not had a gap in between, I would be sick of it by now and want to take some time off. Um, but I think that, I think it's the gap that's what's getting me motivated, to be honest. But those guys that have done it for the last twenty years and have always been competitive is incredible. And then to win the belt later on in the in their career is, I mean, what you know, what what a silver lining for them. By the way, uh, since you know, since you you left, did you have a moment where you stopped watching where it was maybe too painful for you or you needed a break mentally in the early days of, you know, your separation from the UFC. Did you need to take a, uh, a mental break from MMA? I mean, I, I probably should have done, but I didn't. Huh. Um, cause we have other stuff going on. You know, we have like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to doing these war rooms now and uh, on the channel and, you know, like what well, I have a whole team of guys that, that love doing those shows and, uh, you know, that's their job. So, we just we just kept rolling. We kept rolling. It was difficult. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I love the UFC, and I always imagined that I would be a part of and, and a supporter of the UFC, and I, and I still am. Um, I, I you know I don't agree with it with everything that they do, and, and I think that uh, we all we all share those opinions. The difference is now I'm not on the inside trying to make a difference, and no one's listening. I'm on the outside, and I can say what I like. And if you don't want to listen, you can just switch me off. I mean, that's the downside to being a commentator is. You find all the people that don't like you because they can't turn you off unless they put everybody on mute. So I, I can now, you know, if you don't like me, you don't have to listen to me anymore. And if you do like me, then you know where to find me. So it's a bit more of a selective audience now. I think it works better for me because I, I do I do have a few opinions that people don't seem to like. Uh, I will say that uh, I think you are missed on the broadcast um, before, during, after. 
Um, and, and whatever happened, happened. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want, because people ask me about the things that happened to me a gazillion times and I don't want to repeat it. So I don't want to go down that road. But I will say I am bummed that I thought your team, Raptors MMA, uh, did a great job of covering the events and I'm bummed that they are no longer allowed to cover the events and, and, and be credentialed. I don't think that's uh, fair. And your issues, whatever happened, should have nothing to do with them because they always seem to be very professional. And so I just want to say that publicly because I feel for them and I know how much it meant to them to be at the events and always great uh, people. You know, sometimes when you have newer media members show up to the event, uh, they sort of rub people the wrong way. Your guys always were very kind to everyone, always very respectful. And I think it's uh, it's just unfortunate that you know they can't be at the event. So uh, I hope that that gets rectified. I don't know if it will, but one should have nothing to do with the other, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that was probably, to be honest, the most disappointing thing that came out of it because I mean they, they were just they were just a couple of lads that came into the gym that had a set of skills and they love MMA and they wanted to be a part of it. And when I was able to plug them into the you know the, the media days at the UFC, they were just absolutely losing their mind and you know they were just starting to come into their own around the mcgregor poirier fight because i mean you remember that clip that kept being used over and over again like that was james mystery standing up there repeating conor mcgregor's quote to him from a few years ago and getting him to to tear up on stage you know the ufc used that everybody used that that went around the internet again and people don't quite realize that you know he like he's missed from from those media days both of the raptors are and it was that was part of the thing that was unnecessarily vindictive, like the, the way that it, you know, the way that I, we don't need to get into it. But it, it's, you know, it was you, you're either a part of the family or you are way on the outside, and they'll do everything they can to affect you. And that's that's really unnecessary because I, I, I'm just I'm, I'm just a fan of the sport, you know what I mean? And I was just fortunate enough to to have, have stepped into the UFC a few times. It was. It was just uh, it was unnecessary the way it played out. I don't think I don't think it will be resolved, but I hope it's resolved for the Raptors for sure. I'm happy to to never go back to a UFC event again, but the Raptors I would love for them to be to be present at the events again because I know how much it meant to them. Have you tried to reach out to Dana to clear it up or to someone in PR to clear? It? Have you have you tried to get on the phone or text or whatever? I've tried a few different avenues just to really find out what what had happened and what was said because what what went down was not it was not necessary for, for them to fire me for that, if that makes sense. I mean, it was it was with a colleague that I'd been working with for, for 10, 10 years or so. I mean, you know, the, the person had known me through being a fighter as well as being a part of the UFC team. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what was said, but it was it was massively blown out of proportion. And I never got got a conversation with anybody meaningful in the company. Anytime I would reach out in it under any channel, it was just those doors were closed. I mean, the UFC changed a few years ago. It's very more, very much more a corporation now on the inside. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, that's the thing, you know, it's, it, to, to, I've not heard from Dana at all. Like he, in Dana's mind, he still thinks I was waiting at the door when Herb came out to uh, stop the fight situation. Like he, that's, I'm sure that's still his perspective. And the people around him don't dare correct him. They don't dare tell him he's got something wrong. Like, that that whole pro, that whole situation that happened there, which to be honest, I think is much more of uh, of the reason why I was released in, the, in anyway. Like that whole that whole situation is 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 misunderstood. Like people and and do you want to clear it? Thing do, do you want to clear it up? Well, yes. I mean, sure. I mean, of course. I mean, everyone knows what happened. I, I was I was in the wrong to shout at the referee on the broadcast. I'm I'm well aware of that. That that was my error. Um. And I'll own that error, but I'll stand by it because sometimes there needs to be someone that will do that. Like if that was a silent arena on Saturday, you would have heard DC and Felder doing the same thing halfway through the second round of a fight that went the distance. And we had nobody in there to protect that fighter. Like my, my concern is that the reaction to that was I was the one that was in the wrong and I was the one that was shunned, even though the referee was not at all self-reflective with two late stoppages on the same card. I think the, the, the more familiar faces they get, they get a, 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 level of, um, a level of respect that is due to them, of course. But we have to make sure that these people are protecting the fighters, right? In that circumstance, I saw a fighter that was clearly unconscious on the floor. He was in the fencing position, which, I mean, I don't know whether you saw the video I put out afterwards. I explained the fencing response. Um, that is a that is a, a, a surefire way of, of 
um, determining that someone's got a concussion. And a referee not to know that is a concern. I've spoke to several referees and not one of them knows what the fencing response is. So maybe that's an issue with their training. I know that there are referees that do training, but there's more that can be added to that. We can't act like we're perfect. We're still a very young sport. Anyway, I've, I've digressed. In that moment, yeah, I shouted out that the fight needed to be stopped because I could see where I was that Jai Herbert was unconscious. I could also see that Trinaldo had recognized he was unconscious, which is why he stopped and didn't hit him anymore. The difference was that was a silent arena. So when I shouted stop the fight, he knew exactly who it was. That's why, he, that's why if you watch on the broadcast, he looks over at me and he tells me to be quiet. Anyway, as soon as the fight was over, I am now in my, in my spot at the broadcast. I've finished uh, commentating the, the, the fight. I'm taking my headset off so I can turn around and face the camera to interview Trinaldo because this was the social distancing in interviews and stuff. So I'm still behind my desk. As I'm standing up, I notice that Herb Dean's walking out the, out the cage and coming over to me. And Herb doesn't move particularly quick. And he was moving quick. He was walking at my desk with a pace. So what do I, I'm, I'm not going to turn my back on him, of course. So I take my headset off and I mute it so you can't hear what's going on on the broadcast, right? And, and he said, did, and we had a back and forth conversation, you know. I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was, you know, did you, sh you shout something at me? I said, yes, I did. That's the second time that there was, you know, two times, blah, blah, blah. You know, and he, he said, you let me do my job and you do yours. And I said, you, you need to do your job. I can't remember exactly what I said, but you, you remember the exchange. Anyway, he walked away. I turned around, put my headset on and, and did the interview with Trinaldo. But then the whole story got turned around somehow. Even when I got backstage, the producer came at me out of the truck and was yelling at me for, because I'd gone over to, the, to confront him. I never did. I stayed at my desk. And when I spoke to the UFC about it afterwards, their advice to me was, in that moment, you should have turned your back. And as a martial artist, I could never do that. I can see this guy coming at me with a pace. I'm going to stand and be ready. Like, he was leaning over my desk. So maybe in hindsight, if I'd have complained about that, I might have found myself in a, in a more protective position. But my main focus is the, is the fighters getting protection. And He's still present every or, or, at regular events and still making mistakes consistently. He still waves the fight off at the end of the round. He still doesn't exactly know what he's doing. It, it concerns me. It really does because at some point, our sport is going to be negatively affected by someone not doing their job. And we're all going to be impacted by that. And we're all going to be saddened by it. And this weekend was a good example of that. We were close to it. Brian Ortega, same situation, you know? None of these people are going to be there in, in 15 or 20 years when these guys can't remember their kids' names. Like, that's the thing that we have to not forget. We love MMA. I love MMA. I, nobody loves a knockout as much as me. Trust me. I watch them on repeat over and over again. Look how he did this. Look at the feint. I love it. But what I don't want to see is these guys taking unnecessary damage because the sport's damaging enough. And we need referees that do good jobs. And there are a, a small handful of them out there and we need to protect them, and we need to get them training the rest because there are a lot of guys that are slipping, and they're not the ones that are taking the punishment. Amen. And uh, get them paid probably a little more because right now it's uh, it's a labor of love and a pretty thankless job. You, you did a fantastic job of recapping that, and I appreciate uh, the passion in which you do so. Just, just for the sake of it, since I sort of danced around earlier, do you want to say what ultimately led to your – do you want to clear the air what led to your departure from the UFC? Because you still stuck around – after the Herb Dean, um, you know, yeah. Ted a Ted. So what was the ultimate nail in the coffin? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, obviously I've, I've tried not to think about it obsessively, but it's difficult to try to, to not, not want to unpick it a little bit. I mean, I think the first issue was when I arrived at Fight Island, you know, immediately the next, uh, you know, the next Fight Island, my first uh, a question from the media uh, and you can judge where the quest, where question came from, but the question was back at the scene of the crime, you know, and then it went over the Herb Dean thing. It was almost like my response was being tested. I stood my ground and I said my piece again. And I don't think that went down well because after that point, they started to keep the media away from me a bit. That started to be, you know, like I would be, I would see the, the media list where Felder and Gooden and Sanko and Anik and everybody's got 15 minutes in front of the media and my name wouldn't be on the list. It was like they were keeping me away in case I'd say something that they didn't want me to say. So that's my first thought when I, I start thinking that's a bit odd. And, and then the, the, 
the issue was with the person that was responsible for making sure that media work was coming in my direction. Because like, my job, as well as being a commentator, I mean, I was an ambassador for, for, for Europe. So it was my job to be speaking to the media on a, on a regular basis. And that just, that just nosedived. It just dropped off. They just stopped putting work, work my way. So then I'd had this conversation a few times with a few different people in the organization and nothing had been done about it. And then when it came to, um, to, to that particular fight island, so the Holloway cater fight had just ended. I'd done the ESPN desk. So I got back to the hotel at sort of 5 a.m. And I was back downstairs for BT Sport at noon recording for Dustin Poirier at McGregor the week after. Um, and there was just a small group of us there, and you know we're we're, we're having a, we're we're doing the show, etc. And uh, and the individual came came to to see you know see how we were going and stuff. And I asked a, a question about an opportunity with BBC Radio that was they'd requested me, and the message had never got through to me. But I'd been taken off a broadcast in order to 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 do that job. So we I had a bit of you know there was a back a little back and forth of you know why didn't you let me know. You know, if, if something comes through to you to, with my name on it, you, you should let me know these things. And I think ultimately what happened is that the, this individual was embarrassed because there were a few people there. And I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have had that conversation there. It should have happened a different time. And I recognize that. And I have apologized to her. Never heard back from anybody, but I've sent my apologies. But that was it. I mean, there was nothing more to it. It was a back and forth about the fact that I should have been working BBC radio for the McGregor Poirier fight, Octagon side, a massive opportunity for, for the UK for, you know, broadcasting, as you, as you know. And um, that, I mean, that was kind of it. It was just a bit of a back and forth. And then she kind of walked off and I went to uh, fighter interviews and I did what, six, seven hours of fighter interviews for the Wednesday event. And by the time I got back to my room, they called me and said me to tell me they were putting me on a flight. And after that, I had a six-minute conversation with HR. And then two weeks later, they fired me. And, and I have no answers. I have no answers. No one's answering emails, no nothing. And it's, 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 it's infuriating as well as, as well as upsetting because it feels vindictive and it feels unnecessary, but it also feels kind of calculated in a lot of ways, you know? But, you know, Inside the Octagon's gone. I mean, we used to love doing that show. They tried to keep that going. That's gone. Open Mat is now a different show entirely, and I have my own breakdown show. I'm thankful for BT for standing by me and for the fans that have been demanding, and also the ones that completely decimated those Inside the Octagon comments sections because, I mean, they, they were the ones that held strong for me. I appreciate all that. But, yeah, it just, you know, ultimately I feel like I'm on the right side of the line now. Cause now I feel like I can make more of a difference than I could when I was on the inside. But of course, you know, everyone loves to be sitting up to the inside for the big fights. Well, I do, I do enjoy seeing you for the, uh, the cage warriors events. So you're still there doing those. Uh, right. Am I, am I correct in that? That will continue. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I just, I just help cage warriors out. I mean, I've always had such a long relationship with them because of, uh, you know, my being a champion and I've got guys fighting on the cards now as well. So I'm always there and it's just nice to pick up a mic from time to time and get excited about some fights. Um, but I will be commentating again. Absolutely. I will. I, I've got a, a couple options and I'm, I'm weighing them up and seeing which direction I'm going to go. But my priority is to have a couple of fights first and then, then we'll be sitting back down with a microphone again. I love it. Well, enjoy Bellator this Friday. Uh, perhaps that will lead to great things. So great to catch up with you, Dan. And uh, I, I really do wish you the best. And it is nice to see that, Look, it, it, it didn't work out there and things ended unceremoniously. And, and I know it's, uh, it's very hard to talk about. And by the way, I appreciate you bringing this stuff up. I didn't want to upset you on what probably would be a great day for you after visiting the doctor and get the, uh, the, the clean bill of health. But um, one thing that I often like to tell people is, you know, don't lick your wounds. Don't feel sorry for yourself. No one feels sorry for you. Go out there and figure out a new path. And you have done that and then some. So uh, I love the stuff that you're doing. I love the channel. I love the guys that you're aligned with. It's Raptors MMA, right? That's the YouTube channel. Am I correct? Uh, full, full Reptile is, yeah. is the YouTube. Yeah, the Raptors are the, uh, are the, the, the team that run the show. Right. Um, but yeah, Full Reptile is, is the YouTube. Thank My you, apologies. Larry. I appreciate it. My apologies. Uh, great stuff. I look forward to maybe you versus Tyron Woodley, you versus God knows who. Uh, that will be quite the scene, my friend. So uh, we've covered a lot of ground. I appreciate it very much and uh, hope to have you back on soon. Thank you so much.
Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate your time, my friend. All right. There he is. The outlaw, Dan Hardy, a legend of the game. Uh, obviously hard to, uh, you know, to, to, to hear him recount that because you can tell that it is, uh, it is a tough thing. It is a tough thing to talk about. My story, very much different than his. Um, but I think the less, you know, you could go over the past, you could go over this or that. And that's obviously one side of the story. Uh, I don't know the person that he is uh, talking about, the, the employee that he is, uh, that he is referencing, and that's up to him to reveal or not. Um, but I think the, the lesson for anyone in life, you get thrown a curveball, you can either sit down and dwell on it, or you can say, all right, I'm going to start my YouTube channel. I'm going to keep doing this. Uh, I think it's very commendable, incredibly commendable that BT stood by his side. Take it from me, that doesn't always happen. Um, so I think that that's an incredible thing and says a lot about those people, by the way. Um, and I think that he still provides an incredible service uh, to the audience over there. And obviously they put the, uh, the shows on YouTube as well. So still very much a part of the sport, still beloved. I could see the reaction to him being on. Uh, a lot of people excited that he was uh, going to be on the program. And I think that that's great that people still remember why he was uh, such a big part of the sport and such a great mind when it comes to the sport. And so let's see next year, a boxing match, a Muay Thai fight. Great stuff. Good for Dan Hardy, and I wish him nothing but the best. And uh, I look forward to seeing what he does next. Now, uh, we'll stick with the UK MMA scene. We'll go from one fighter who no longer fights in the UFC to another who is doing incredible things in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, representing Manchester, England, to be exact. He had an incredible win this past Saturday against Makwan Amir Khani, an amazing knockout win in the second round. That knee was beautifully timed. And uh, he remains undefeated. In fact, he remains undefeated fighting in the UFC in Abu Dhabi. He only fights in Abu Dhabi. So it seems to be good luck for him. His good friend Luke Barnott has been uh, has been hounding me to have him on the show, Lerone Murphy, The Miracle. And I said, we got to wait for the right time, Luke. And on Saturday, I hit him up and I said, it's the right time. And so without further ado, let us say hello to Lerone Murphy, who's kind enough to join us. Lerone, my man, how are you? Thank you for doing this. What's happening, man? It's been a long time coming, but finally here. I love it. I love it. And it's so great to have you. Are you sponsored by Warzone, whatever that is behind you? It's it's very nicely. Oh, now I lost your lighting. It's like positioned perfectly. Yeah. Is this is this a sponsored element? Nah, I was just playing it before <laughs> while I was waiting to come on. Respect. And I know you just flew home from Abu Dhabi. Mm. Uh, so I appreciate you doing this in the evening over there in the UK. By the way, uh, both Luke and I have a bone to pick with you. Um you're doing great things and, and, and we respect you tremendously, but I haven't, I don't like, you know, I use an iPhone and I don't like yeah. people. I'm not a big fan of when you text someone and then it says read at a certain time, because I sort of feel like, okay, I don't need to know. And then I see that you read it and you don't reply. And then I start to get all anxious. <laughs> However, it has come to my attention, Lerone, that you're one of those who uses WhatsApp and doesn't turn on the blue check. I hate the people who turn off the blue check. I mean, I want to know if it's been received. That's common courtesy. Why do you turn off the blue check? This is from me and Luke. We want to we want to have an intervention. Why do you turn off the blue check? For that exact reason, I keep it, if, if I read the message and I'm not ready to reply, then I'm not ready to reply. When, when people see blue ticks, they feel disrespected. Yes. And sometimes it's not even, it's not even that. You just not got the time, you know? Okay, fair enough. I don't know if I buy the excuse, but uh, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> Glad that we cleared that up. Um, by the way, why always in Abu Dhabi? Why don't they have you fight anywhere else? Four fights, four fights in Abu Dhabi. I'm not complaining, you know, to be honest, but obviously I've been booked to fight in London a few times and it's and the, sh the show's been cancelled. So I feel like I'm the bad luck charm for London. Um, and the Vegas got cancelled because my visa didn't come in time. So... I have had other shows booked, but it's just it always end up falling in Abu Dhabi. And and uh, what happened with the visa? What was the issue? Was it the same stuff that like Patty was dealing with and some of those guys? Yeah, similar thing. I must have had just like a caution from 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 when I was a kid, and it's like they have to knock back the first um, initial um, visa, and then you got to wait a few weeks. But it's stupid, really. But yeah, it is what it is. What's this caution that you're speaking of that you're glossing over, Lerone? Just an old caution for cannabis when I was a kid. He used oh, okay. to smoke a bit of weed here and there, like nothing really. 
All right, fair enough. Um, great win, great performance. I know you're a little disappointed, no 50 Gs. Did you think you had it in the bag? Most certainly. Like that was that was the cleanest KO of the night. Nobody else went to sleep like that from from a strike. Um, and to to come back from the first the first like I had a bad first round and to come out like that and just to KO KO Macron like that. For me, it deserved it in it, but obviously that's the pros and cons of fighting on big cards like that. Um, the big guys usually get the bonuses. Yeah, it's it's a weird one because obviously it's discretional. They don't have to give bonuses to anyone, but it's always funny mm. when someone who's you know coming up and lower on the card uh, doesn't get one, and then someone on the card who's higher up, who obviously is probably making more than someone you know on the prelims, doesn't get it. I was surprised they put you in the early prelims and not on the BT portion of the card. Were you surprised about that as well? I think that was just because um, I was a replacement fighter. I think they just okay. kept kind of kept the card the same. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm not too sure. I wasn't really bothered where I fought. I just wanted to fight, really. Um, after my fight got cancelled, I just needed to get in there. Yeah. Um, and so, again, like I said, a tremendous win. And now I feel like I feel like that was your best in the UFC. And you've had some great moments so far. Would, would you say that's the performance that you're most proud of thus far? No. Really? Not at all. Not, I'm not even being negative right now, but I just feel like I've watched it back before and... Like that whole that whole day, I just had a weird day, and it felt like I couldn't get up for the fight almost. And like even in the change rooms, I'm hitting pads, feeling slow, flat. Not even slow, flat. And then I'm walking out. I'm just not feeling like I normally. I'm I'm on fire inside. I'm dying to get in there. Um, I'm dying to fight, and I just felt a bit weird. And then even it took me around to get warm. As soon as I as soon as I got out, um, first round, sat down on the bench. And I was like, okay, I'm warm now. I want to now. I want to go. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah. that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Amateur, pro, I felt, that was the first time I've ever felt like that. Any reasons, any uh, hypotheses as to why that happened? I don't have a clue. I wasn't even, it wasn't like I was nervous. And I think that's what, that's what it was. I wasn't nervous almost. And nerves are good for fighters, as everybody knows. And I don't, even, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. I can't I think, get mad around it. I think the reason is you didn't walk out to Island Boy. I think that was the uh, <laughs> element that was. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, by the way, uh, I saw your picture with Hasbula. Was that before or after the event? That was the day after the the event. That okay. was a Sunday morning. Did yeah, he give you man. any uh, words of uh, wisdom? Did he say anything about your fight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he was a bit pissed off that everyone was asking for pictures. I think that must have been his probably 50th picture of the right. day so he's, he's you know yeah so your team has Famous, Bula, like, not uh abdul nah i'm hasbulla bro okay. i like hasbulla <laughs> hasbulla is gangster he is gangster um well uh you know part of your appeal and i know that uh you have probably retold the story of why they call you the miracle ad nauseum but this is our first time talking larone and so please let me be mm -hmm. the uh, 500th and first person to ask you could you tell the story yeah. of what happened back in 2013 when you were leaving that barbershop because this is one of the most i was doing a show on 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 friday with uh with pt carroll and chuck Mendenhall and uh I was telling them about a PT New Year story, but Chuck was like blown away. He had no idea. So, so there's still some people out there who don't know what you have had to overcome. Can you tell us what it was? Yeah, it's just obviously I'm just gonna say it like it's nothing in it because I've told it so many times. But it's just I was young, 20, 21, and whatever. Um, I was coming out of a barber's and I ended up getting shot in the face, drive by. Now. This is an. I mean, again, you say it like I went to the store to get milk. Like it's just completely nonchalant for you. Were they targeting you, or were you just caught in the crossfire? I don't know. I don't know. One of the. I don't know. Could have been. I don't know. It's just one of them areas, isn't it? Things happen. Now this is May of 2013, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still eight years later, you don't know. Nah. Did they ever find the guy who shot you? I don't know, bro. Wow, you don't know. Now, can I ask, I do, you, do you not know or do you not want to talk about it? I, just, I don't even know, you know. Okay. don't know, bro. Now, and and what, what are the uh, the ramifications that you had to deal with? Because it, it went through your cheek, correct? Through my mouth. I uh, lost a few teeth on that side. And then I had to get like a... Um, wow. Off, a tracheostomy through my throat. Did they think you were going to die? Cut. Yeah, because my... Because the bullet went through my tongue, um, my mouth started to swell up and I couldn't breathe, so they had to do the tracheostomy through my throat. Do you even remember it? 
Yeah, I remember everything. You remember the feeling? Yeah, it didn't it, yeah, it's just like it just felt like I got punched in the face. Really? <laughs> just felt like I, yeah, it just felt like I, I just got dropped and went out, went out for a few seconds and then walked back up and it's just like Call of Duty ringing in my ears and then um got back up and just went to the hospital. Did you lose teeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have fake teeth? Yeah, yeah, a few. How, how, many, how many would you say are fake? Four, say four, okay. three, four. And, and, and who, who called the, the ambulance? Like, who, who saved your life? I would imagine if no one calls, you may die on the spot, right? Yeah, no, I got in, I got in my cousin's car, went, went with my cousin. Holy smokes, your cousin was there with you? Yeah, yeah. Did he get shot? No. Okay, thank me. God. Have you ever, did you ever go back to that uh, that barber, by the way? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I got out of hospital, I went. I got got a haircut. Come on, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> you still go Stupid back? Stupid. Now I think of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I got a different one. I got a different barber now, but yeah. Okay. How long were you in the hospital for? Uh, maybe ten ten days to two weeks. Okay. About two, two, yeah, not, not that long. And and uh, did like did was your face at the time? What did it look like? Normal, you know. It's, what? It's crazy enough, but crazy enough, it wasn't. Oh, it's just, I don't know. It's just like one of them things. Like an inch to an inch to any side, it would have been a total different story. It's sure. Just like, do you get what I'm saying? It's yeah. Just, it's one of them. It's just one of them weird, weird little situations. How long did it take for you to, you know, resume a normal life again? Like, how long was the actual recovery? Physical or mentally? Oh, uh, okay. That's a great uh, follow up. I, I, let, let's go physical first. Physicals and it's physical was a minor, like nothing really. It's, I was recovered pretty much straight away, like uh, not straight away, yeah, but yeah. within a few weeks. Within a few weeks, but mentally, it's more like if that. That's probably where the, the damage was caused. Where it's like you just you just like probably angry all the time and whatnot. Now, um, being around people, was it hard to go back into like normal, more, normal life? Were you anxious about that? Did you feel like you were looking over your shoulder? Uh, not really, you know. Not, not re- nah, not really. Uh, but pro- uh, yeah, obviously more than more than I was, but not like I was still going to places. I was still going to into town, into raves and what whatnot at the time. So, oh wow! Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, prior to this, did you train in martial arts at all? Nah, I, um, I started martial arts 22 years old. Um, I didn't do no, no combat sports before that. You were, you, you wanted to be a footballer, right? Yeah. Yeah. As a kid, but like, there's a, I probably stopped playing football, maybe 15, 16. And then there's just a big gap in my life where I didn't do any sports. I just, just chilled yeah. as a teenager, you know? Did did you used to get in a little bit of trouble? Bits and bobs. Okay. Bits and bobs. Um, Bits and bobs. Did you get into martial arts because of what happened? No, nah, not at all. It, people people think that, but it's not at all. It was just it's just one of the things I used to I used to always watch it. My dad used to have the old school UFC DVDs. Um, I used to I used to always watch it, and I always loved watching it. But it's just like a gym opened up at, around the. Um, like a few, like maybe what six months, seven months after after that thing happened, and then I just ended up going there, and I just loved it, and I just, I just loved training in it, and I felt felt like that training took my mind away from thinking about other things. You know what I mean? And it was it was my only time where I felt free, so mm. I felt like that's where I got my addiction from, and I was literally in the gym every day, and then I, I never thought I'd be a fighter. I was just training because I like train training. Do you get what I'm saying? And I just ended up having my first amateur fight. And then from there, I was hooked, hooked for life. How do you go from like, oh, I'm just there to train, get my mind off things, to an amateur fight, to a pro fight? Like who convinces you? Who tells you, you know what? You should probably think of this. Do you know what? It's like the, the coach puts you in for a fight. You're scared to death. You don't want to You don't want to fight. You're thinking, I'm me. I'm not ready to fight. Like I, I'm going to fight in front of my friends and that. Like, and then once you take that step, and you have to fight, then you, you're in. Then it's a crazy thing. And now, you, like you it's never much. would, you you never would have imagined that you'd do this in your career, right? Like this would be your job. 
never ever in a million years. <laughs> like that was that was always my, 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 my cousins. My cousin does boxing, and I always used to think, how do you fight in front of people? Like you brave. Like I'd be like I've got too. I'm almost about like too much ego to think I'd like put myself in that position, make myself vulnerable, and be able to like lose in front of people. Do you get what I'm saying? And and, and that's what I was always scared of. But once I got in there, then I was sweet. What do you think you'd be doing if you never found this? <sighs> scary to think, you know. I don't have a clue. Scary to think. So in many respects, I mean, you survived the shot, but uh, one could say MMA kind of helped save your life as well. 100%. Like, one, 100%. Wow. Um, that is unbelievable. Do you, do you still know those coaches that got you into it? Like, are you still with those guys? No, um, it's same, same team, same team, yeah. But um, I'm working with the, the coach you would have seen um, in, my, in all my UFC fights, is Carl Prince. Um, we've got a new gym in, in in Ashton, Manchester, called Manchester Top Team. Right, and you work um, with... But we're... Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. I started with the same people. We're all the same people, yeah. Now, how did you meet Big Slow, Luke Barnard? Because I have to say, this man has been telling me about you. Like, this man is a fan of yours since before yeah, you Luke's got... Yeah, Luke's my guy. Yeah, he, he's, been, he's been touting you since before you got to the UFC, messaging me, you got to watch Lerone. You got... Sending me your clips, sending me your articles. Like, he has really been on your bandwagon driving that thing. How did you guys link up? Through Car Prince, okay. which is my coach. He's them, them two are friends, and he brought Luke to the gym a few times, and... Luke's just helped me with a lot of a lot of things, even away from fighting. Um, and I just like the way he breaks, he breaks situations down, and and even the cult, the way he coaches. I like the way he coaches. Everything's straightforward, simple. Um, and yeah, we just we just created a connection from there. By the way, in those early days when you were at the gym, when people would punch you in the face, would that hurt? Like, would that hurt even more so? Because no, nothing. Nah, not at all. You know, that's nah. Weird. Uh, and you have, I'm the Iron Man now. You are the Strong, freaking Iron Man. Stronger. Jeez Louise. I'm assuming <laughs> the nickname is because of what you survived. You didn't have the nickname before. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as your day to day life, eating, things like that, does this affect you at all? Sweet. Nah, not at all. I'm sweet. Jeez. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky, man. I'm lucky. Very lucky. Man, I can't imagine. Do you feel like it changed the way you look at life? Like, uh, do, did you have, do you have now a more, I mean, obviously it was eight years ago, but like, were you someone who just kind of went through life and then afterward, a new appreciation for life, for, for the finer things, for family, for friends, you know, the stuff we take for granted? Mm, yeah, 100%. Like before, it's like you said, day to day, just living life day to day um, with no goals almost, just waking up and doing what I'm doing, like no, no real goals. But even since I had my son, I think that that's what changed my life. Um, I'm a way of thinking, really. I had my son at 23, 20, no, 25, sorry. And that's when my, my mindset really changed. And it was like phew, putting my all into this MMA. I'm, 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 I'm making it. I'm making a better life for my family. How old are you now? I'm 30 now. 30, so you're 30 in July. Your, th your son is five. My son's four. Four turning four. five, yeah. Um, yeah, does, yeah. Does, does he understand what you do? Kind of, yeah, he trains a bit. He does a bit of training. I bring him to the gym. Yeah, he does the kids' classes and that. He, un he, under he understands it to a certain extent, obviously. Does, like, will you show him the knockout from Saturday? Yeah, I'll show him the fight. I'll show him the fight. And what does he say to that? He just, he just, he just look. He don't, <laughs> he don't really. I don't. I don't think he understands. Yeah. I don't think he understands. But he just, he just look, watches it. Yeah, and just says, "Oh, is that you, Daddy?" Whatever, whatever. It is. Uh... What you do is infinitely cooler than what I do. But sometimes I'll show my kids who are older than than yours what I do. Like on hey, here I am, you know, on TV. They couldn't care less. I'd rather go watch YouTube <laughs> than some cartoon. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, not. Could not care less. Yeah, it's not asked right now. But when he when he gets into high school or whatever, he'll be able to show his friends and stuff. So that's that's what I'm looking forward to. For sure. Now, um, your next one, we, we got to get out of Abu Dhabi, right? Like, we need to go fight somewhere else, right? I mean, you you want to switch it up a little bit? 
I want to do the UK, really, that's top yeah. of my list. And then Vegas, when it's fully open, I don't really, I'm not really bothered about fight, fighting in Vegas unless it's fully open, like yeah. fully. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like the full Vegas, the full Vegas um, experience. But I want to fight in front of my home home fans, the UK fans, and I feel some real energy. Did you ever go to a, I know you said you were a bit late to the game, but like, did you ever go as a mm. fan to any of the UK UFC cards? The first ever UFC I went to was um, Bisping versus Henderson. Oh, for the belt, when Bisping uh, defended his title. Yeah, what year was that? That was 2016 uh, UFC 204. Imagine, that was the one at like 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was my second. I went to uh, McGregor Mendez in Vegas. That was my first ever event. Oh. And then I, went to, then I went to the Manchester one, yeah. Okay, so you went to UFC 189. Why were you in Vegas for that? Uh, we were just in Vegas partying with me and the boys, really, and then and then we ended. We got me and my boy Demo. We got some tickets for the McGregor fight. It was sick, sick, best show I've ever been to. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, he walked out to Sinead O'Connor and and whatnot, and then so then you went to that Bisping one. That was the one in the middle of the night. What was that like? Yeah, mad, like crazy walk. Oh, it's crazy. It was, sick. It was a sick show, obviously, but it's just mad to be like coming out of a fight at five a.m., six a.m., whatever it was. Um, when you were watching those fights back then, now this is five years ago. Um, the Bisping one is almost exactly five years ago. I, I think it was October of uh, 2016, if my memory serves me correct. Were you thinking I'm going to be there one day? Yeah, that's when when I watched it live. When I actually went to the McGregor fight, that's when I fought Robbie Lawler fought as well um, against Rory McDonald. Yep, yep. All of them guys, and it's just like this is what I want to be, man. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to fight in front of these fans like that. It's just a crazy energy. So who do we want next? Mach one's, you know, and Mach one's an interesting guy to beat because I feel like, and I don't know if you view it this way. Um, you know, there was a time where Mach one, I think was considered like a top prospect in your weight class. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately I think he's been a bit of a, you know, he's hit a bit of a rough skid now. And I feel like you're now one of these guys that people are talking about. So there's, there's, there's a tale there to learn, but for you, as you move on from a great knockout win over Makwani Mirkhani, who's still very much respected, who makes sense next for you? Um, I, obviously, I'm aiming for top fifteen. I, I've been shouting for a top fifteen, but uh, whoever, whoever, man, whoever. At, at this point, I'm just growing as a fighter, and I'm just aiming for the title. That's my only. That's my only goal, really, the title. So whoever on the way, I'm taking. And I feel like I'm like like you just said, Macron was a was a um, prospect and that. But these these guys stop growing. I'm still growing, and I feel like I'm I can get so much better, it's like so much better. And it's just putting it, getting it, getting it right, man. And and I feel like I'm, I will do in the next in the next fight. You know which one I like? You versus Alex Caceres. He had a big win a couple of weeks ago. He's on a roll. What do you think of that? My coach, you keep my coach because he's been asking for that fight. Um, he wants me to fight Caceres as well. Okay, your coach and I are on the same uh, the same wavelength. <laughs> you like that one? I. Bro, He's fifteen. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be um and an hour and about anybody you say, but right. put the fight in front of me, and we're gonna. Do you get what I'm saying? I'll um and hour about any any anything. I'm I'm assuming the rest of the year is done for you, right? So maybe like early portion of 2022. You know what, bro? Like I've been sat about this today, like not doing anything, and I'm just thinking I need to get back to the gym. Huh. I need to, I need to, I need to go and train, man. I, I, I'll fight in December. Wow. But re realistically, it's probably going to be February. But I, I, just, I just, I've got a bug now. I feel like I just feel like I've got something to prove, man. I just, I, feel, I keep, I keep saying to people, I'm not giving my best performance. I'm not giving my best performance, but. I'm thinking to myself, is that just how I perceive myself or is that how I actually fight? Do you get what I'm saying? But I feel like I know I can fight better than that. I know of course. I can fight better than that. And that will keep pushing you and give you more motivation to get back in there. Uh, more, most importantly, mm. we'll end on this. Uh, whose side are you on? Uh, another Mancurian, I do believe, Tommy Fury or Jake Paul? Who are you rooting for? Nah, Tommy will smash him, you know. <laughs> Tommy will smash him. You know Tommy? Tommy smash. Tommy's a problem. So I don't, I don't personally, but his friends are friends. Um, but I feel like he'll, Tommy will smash him. He's a proper boxer, and it's, it's going to be um, Jake Paul's toughest fight in it, obviously. And I feel like he'll, I feel like he'll smash him. You know. Are you a United fan? 
Man United. What's wrong with Man United? United yeah. What's happening? <sighs> manager. I think it's the manager. You can't. You can't. You can't listen to somebody that you've. It's you've trained like you've trained with and been in the same team with. You're not gonna have the same respect. I don't right, think. Right. I feel like we need. We need like an older manager that's that's been in the game, got the experience and stuff. Yeah, I saw uh, Connor. I think he's a big United fan as well. Connor McGregor. He tweeted the same thing. If you want to jump off the bandwagon, Lerone. Uh, I, we do say up the toffees around these parts, and we <laughs> welcome you to Everton, all right? If you'd like to, please nah. consider it. What, what do you think? Well, are you an Everton fan? Of course. Lifelong, Lerone. What are you talking about? What? Are you kidding? Were you surprised? How, how did you even find them? Like, how, do, well, how if, does a Canadian know about <laughs> Everton? Though? Well, if I'm being honest, Lerone, uh, I was a lifelong Leicester Ollie. Uh, Leicester City fan. I was a lifelong Leicester City fan. They win the Premiership, and then Molly, she helped by my love, and I jumped over to Everton because she was so enthusiastic and uh, persuasive. She got me some gear, and so now I'm Everton. Okay, okay, makes sense. Makes Not sense. really. I mean, it's a little bit shameless, but uh, here I am repping because Molly's the best, and uh, they got they gave me some. Fr- I could be bought, Lerone. That's the basic bottom line here. I could be bought. <laughs> they sent me some gear, <laughs> and that was that. Uh, so great to have you on the show, my friend. Congratulations on all your success. I am sorry for making you recount. Yep. Uh, a a very you know trying time in your life, but uh, I thought it was no, important for the fun. audience to know why they called yeah, yeah, that and, and and why your story is so special. I look forward to the next one, and thanks for doing this, especially after the long journey home. Yeah, anytime, brother. Thank you for having me. All right, there he is, Lerone Murphy, the miracle, as they call him. What a unbelievable story that is. Shot in the face, shot in the face eight years ago, a little over eight years ago. And now he is one of the rising stars in the UFC, regardless of weight class. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, just amazing. And these are the interviews, by the way. These interviews right here are the ones that I miss doing. You know, back when I had some sort of restrictions as to how many interviews I could do, who I can talk to, are they big enough? Are they small enough? Is there enough time? Is there this or that? I miss talking to the Little Murphys. And that was the, I mean, that was the issue. Luke, uh, his his guy, Luke Barnard, Big Slow, would always say, you got to get Lerone on. You got to get Lerone on. And uh, I, I didn't have the real estate. These are, the, these are the guys that will be headlining UFC cards in uh, the not-too-distant future. These are the guys that we're going to be all talking about. Piotr Jan, not that long ago, was, you know, who, who was Piotr Jan coming to the UFC? He was someone that, like, Kaposa knew from, uh, you know, Abu Dhabi Fight Club 47. But, you know, other than that, for the most part, no one knows. So these are the guys that I love talking to, and uh, it, is, it is an amazing story to see and it's a it's an amazing story to uh, to follow a guy who was shot in the face doing so well in the UFC. Um, do you need me to to check in on our guy here? Just one second. Later on in the show, we are going to be joined. In studio, let the masses know by old friend of the program, New York Rick, back on the team in a different capacity. The last time we were in studio together was June of 2018. My last show here before I left ESPN, uh, he left with me in an unofficial capacity. And now he's back. Last week he started back at MMA fighting in a different role. And so I'm looking forward to that. Our first in-studio guest of the new era. Trying to work on a potential uh, couple of guests in studio. You know, everyone's in New York for 268, but I don't know if it's going to happen with the timing and the rules and everything. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, So we'll do that later in the show. We'll check in on GC. um, See how he did. I think he did well. Don't forget, we have to check in on how he did at 267, but also PFL. We had PFL last week. Uh, on that Wednesday. I, I, I think the show might still be going on, by the way. It was a lot. We, we start, the show started while we were still on the air and it ended at like midnight. It was crazy. I was here in this chair when the show started and nine hours later, it was still going. But it was a good show. I mean, unbel- Ray Cooper with the unbelievable finish. Uh, Kayla Harrison proving once again that she is incredibly dominant. Clarissa Shields losing via split decision. Um. Yeah, I mean, it was a great show. It was just a little bit long. 
And so we'll check in on how he did there, how he did at 267 on Wednesday. We'll get his picks for 268. There is a buzz in the city because the UFC is back in town, a big time event. Well, if I'm being honest, the buzz is because of the, the New York Knicks. But I think come Thursday, Friday, there's going to be a big buzz in the city because the UFC is back. It's been two years, of course. They didn't come back last November due to the pandemic. And it's a really big week of MMA once again. Bellator 270 in Dublin, Ireland. Peter Queeley versus Patricky Pitbull, number two. James Gallagher against Patchy Mix. Fabian Edwards on the card. Pedro Carvalho against Daniel Weichel. Apparently, Dan Hardy in attendance. Uh, LFA is going down. Brave has a nice little title fight between uh, Ali Bagautinov and Jose Shorty Torres, who are former UFC fighters. And of course, the big one, UFC 268. Madison Square Garden, Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington, Rose Namajunas versus Zhang Wei Li for the strawweight title, the rematch. Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje, Shane Burgos versus Billy Quarantillo. How about Frankie Edgar versus Marlon Vera? Something for everyone on that main card. I love that Frankie Vera fight. The debut of Alex Pejeda, of course, the guy who beat Israel Adesanya in uh, glory. Bobby Green, Ally Quinta, Phil Hawes, Chris Curtis. How about the debut of Ian Gary, the Uber prospect, Edmund Shabazian on the card, John Volante on the card. Like I said, something for everyone. That's UFC 268. But let's go back now to 267 and let's talk to a man who I'm assuming watched UFC 267 and in particular the co-main event, probably was watching very closely. He is the current reigning defending UFC bantamweight champion. He is the man who uh, we all want and hope will fight Piotr Jan next to unify those titles. He is the pride of Long Island, New York. He is the one and only, the funk master, Al Jermaine Sterling. He's back! Funk master. I'm back, baby. Aljo, we I went from back. being we went from being bitter enemies to now you being on the show three times in the past like month and a half. How about that? Well, you know what? The Bantamweight division is one of the hottest divisions, if not the hottest division right now. So I think everybody wants to know what's going on. That's right. And by the way, what about this camera that you got here? I mean, this is high quality stuff. This isn't your typical you webcam. Know. Hey, hey, nothing but the best, Ariel. <laughs> nothing but the best. Respect, respect. <laughs> so uh, inquiring minds want to know, Aljo. Number one, I'm assuming you watched the co-main event on Saturday, Peter Jan, Corey Sanhagen. Of course, brilliant fight. Very, very brilliant fight from both guys. Okay, so tell me more. What did you think of the performance? What did you think of the fight? I'm assuming you scored it like everyone else for Jan, but let's go a little bit deeper. What did you think of the fight? What stood out? What stood out to me was the main things that P. Jan does very well is he keeps a very slow and steady pace, and he's slowly but surely gets a little bit stronger as the guys start to deplete a little bit. Um, I felt like Corey, maybe that five and a half week preparation for that fight kind of played a, a factor in that. I mean, obviously he's not trying to take anything away from Jan, but it is a still short notice fight. You had him have a performance the way he did against TJ Dillashaw. And then he kind of slowed down relatively early in this one. Um, outside of that, I think he kind of stopped going to the body, stopped going to the leg kicks. And I think that didn't keep those were the cleanest shots that he was landing because Jan does a great job with his high guard defense, his high shell. He does a great job with the left hand parry and it's hard to get shots through that, that are actually meaningful. But if you keep that pace, you can't win a fight when you're on your heels and going backwards the whole time. you got to throw something, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like him slowing down and him stop going to the body, him stop going to the legs gave the opening for Jan to, to start to get stronger a little bit, but he tried to mix it up with the grappling and you know, he's not a wrestler, but it, I don't know if that did him any favors. I think he might have committed a little too hard where he got stuffed in the in a sprawled out position where it kind of allowed him to take some shots that he didn't need to take. Um, but what Jan did well was stay composed, kept the constant pressure, kept coming back forward. And even though Corey made him miss a ton, he doesn't care. His output is always going to be the same. He's going to still keep coming forward and still trying to look to get you out of there if he can. You know, uh, a lot of high-level techniques, the spinning back fist to the overhand that dropped Corey. Um, I still don't know how he got hit with that. But, uh, you know, it's the fight game. When you're caught in a moment, I think sometimes things that you normally don't get hit by kind of catches you by surprise, you know. So good performance, but still, I think there were some questions that was answered for me. And I'm I'm so excited to get back out there, man. I, I It was good to, to know who the true number two contender is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to lose to number one. And that's all that matters, baby. That's all that matters. I love it. So so you talked about those questions. Like what? What, what did you 
What did you find out? Well, for it, for for one, the main thing is people were doubting my wrestling ability and making it seem like that was like a normal day in the gym for me in terms of how good I really am when I when I apply pressure and try to get these guys down. I mean, if you look at my track record, I I can't I have to admit I had to go back and watch again and look at my other fights to see am I missing something here? Am I the one that's out of the loop on this one? And I really feel confident to know that. No, it wasn't that. To see that Corey was able to get him down the way he did, get on his back the way he did, it just gives me more confidence to know that, yes, I really did have an off night. And that's all it is. It's just an off night. He looked like the better wrestler. He looked like the better defensive wrestler in our performance back in March. He did what he was supposed to do. He took advantage of the situation. And I can't say anything about that other than I know the next fight is going to be completely different. And I'm very comfortable in my own skin to know that I'm confident enough that I know I'm going to beat this man. Do you think, like, so his last fight was against you. This was his first fight since. Do you think he got better? Were you impressed with him? Um, to say he got better, I, I think that's kind of hard to say. I mean, what are we measuring that against? His fight against me? I mean, yeah. if that's what we're comparing it to. I mean, you could say that with the fight against Aldo, maybe. But it's kind of the same exact thing happened. He kind of started to fade a little bit. But the difference was Corey was able to go five rounds. I went 88 seconds with Corey. I think the proof, I mean, you can't do MMA math. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing MMA math, but I'm just saying when I'm on, I'm a very dangerous guy to beat. And that's what makes me feel good about this fight. So yeah, Pideon probably got better. Maybe he got physically stronger or faster, but he still missed just as much. He still swings the the hard shots. He, he does just as well. He still plots the way he plots. The only adjustments I think he really did really good coming from that first round to the rest of the fight was he started to attack the body with those free, free body kicks that San Hagen was giving up. He took the free leg kicks. And I know San Hagen in the fight with TJ was saying that oh, the leg kicks didn't hurt. But, you know, they score, they do damage, and they add up. They accumulate. It's a fist fight. It's just like a, a, a energy bar meter. You know, you can't just keep taking those shots for free. You know, so he wasn't giving them anything to think about. And I think that's what Pideon did very, very well. And I love the highlight that he did, hitting him with a spinning wheel kick at the end of the fight, which I thought was very... Uh, um, it was the irony in that hitting him with the spinning wheel kick at the end to kind of put an exclamation point. I think that kind of burned Corey a little bit where he was like, I got to hit this mother. I got to hit this guy back. I got to get my hands back on this guy for trying to disrespect me like that. You know what I mean? So um, I'm feeling good. Eric. I'm feeling like an island boy. Uh, keep on going because I'm an island boy. <laughs> you are a legit island boy. I mean, representing Jamaica. I am a legit one. The rest of us are just uh, posers. Um, did you find yourself rooting for Piotr because he wins. It's the big rematch. There's the, like, did you feel like on the couch, wherever you were watching this, you were actually rooting for your rival? Yes and no. I, it, for me, it's kind of a weird relationship that we have. You know, he yes. blocked me on Instagram. I'm kind of sad about that. I'm oh, kind he of did? P Piotr, you got to unblock me so I can talk shit to you. You know, you, oh. can't, you can't post shit. And then when I post it back, you get mad and then block me kind of feminine trait is that, right? When did that happen? Um, How long ago did that happen? Uh, right after I, I had to pull out of the fight. Oh, interesting. Okay. And he said, oh, I'm not wasting time on this clown anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. But um, I, I it's, it's a weird relationship again. And I think it's because I want to settle the business with him, whether it was for a title or not for a title. We were going to fight again eventually. I told Shelby the same thing. It's like, Shelby, Dana, I told these guys the same thing to their faces. We have to fight no matter what. The score has to be settled. We have to know who the better guy is when we're both feeling the way we should be feeling. So we give the fans the fight that they deserve to see between number one and number two. And uh, with Corey, it's to see a guy come back from, you know, my loss, his loss to me, and then do what he's done to these other guys. It shows that he's a serious threat to this division still, you know? I mean, albeit he's come up short to the best of the best in this division, he's only fought the best guys, you know? So that kind of shows where he's at compared to everybody else. Shows what Jan is at compared to everybody else, myself, TJ. And I think we're kind of setting the, the standard and, and, the, and the, the bar for everybody else to, to either play catch up or to do better. And that's a good thing. I think this division has the potential to do all that. With that being said, uh, I want to see him win or see San Hagen win. Like either way, like I didn't have any horse in the race. Regardless, the rematch between Corey and I was just enough of a big rematch. Me sleeping the Sandman, coming back, doing what he did to all these guys coming up short to TJ, getting a shot of redemption. There's a story there. And then having a chance to fight someone who put him out in the first round, you know, 
pretty much manhandled him in the first round, took him down like a little boy, jumped on his back, climbed his back like a tree, and then choked him out unconscious, you know, put the same man to sleep. So either way, there's a storyline to be built with either fight. Um, with Piotr Jan, you got the guy who's dominating uh, from the, pretty much uh, the third round and on to the foul happen, and, you know, we got an unconclusive finish to, the, to, the, to that fight, you know, so it, it has to be settled, you know, so I'm good with it either way because regardless, both fights were big to me, and as a champ, I get pay-per-view points now, so I don't care. Mm. All I care about is that the same thing I got into the sport from day one was to get paid, change my life, change my mom's life, and I've done that already. So now everything else is just icing on the cake. I got to change my camera. It just died on me. Oh, wow. I jinxed it. No problem. Do you want us to wait? No, 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 no. So oh, wow. I'm, I'm all good. That, wow, look at oh. you. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional, Ariel. Come on, Doug. This is a multi-cam <laughs> shoot. This is a multi-cam shoot right here, Aljo. So wait, you have the... That's fascinating. What what kind of camera do you have in front of your other camera? Yeah, it's a ZV-1. It's a Sony ZV-1, but the freaking batteries, they exhaust, and they just, uh, they just die. And you, you can know, just so switch. Not, you just go into your Zoom preferences and switch to your laptop camera or, whatever, or your desktop. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. That is amazing. Uh, well now done. we got downgrade on the quality. You know, the people uh, deserve the best. They I know. deserve the best. I know. This is where you do the uh, the podcast from, I presume. Yes, sir. The weekly scraps. The weekly scraps. Now, why? I, I noticed you're in New York more these days. What happened to Vegas? Well, I've been in Vegas for all of October. The okay. only times I came back home was for the weekends. My brother fought, I think, the second week of October. We had some other guys fight at the Ring of Combat this, the third week of October. And then my fiance's birthday was just this past thursday and um you know i had to i i'm jet lagged as hell and then for this weekend we have ally quinta fighting at the msg so i've just been back to back to back so i'm staying home for a little bit and then after this fight i'm going back to vegas finish up that month of november with my pt my strength and conditioning and then from there we're ready to go man where i told shelby right after right after that fight was done i texted him and said january or february question mark like you let me know this is when I'll be ready to go. I'm feeling a lot better these days, especially with all the work I've been putting in. Um, really getting to focus on the uh, neurological side of everything to get my my muscle atrophy to stop and all that. So um, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. By the way, how did your uh, your brother's fight go? He lost a... Oh, it wasn't even a split. It was a unanimous decision. It was a close fight. He got taken down and... It, He's still young. He's never wrestled, never did jujitsu until now at age, I think 28 is when he started. So he's still an amateur, but relatively green in terms of matches and understanding like fight nerves and how to use it for you and not against you. Cause he kind of zaps his energy in comparison to what he does in the gym, if that makes sense. Okay. So kind of fatigues a little quicker than he should. But he wants to make a career out of this. He's the funk monster. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what weight? What weight? I'm the funk master. He's the funk monster. What weight? Uh, 135 also. Oh my. Okay. Who yeah, wins? we're six months, six six months apart, it's like six and a half months apart. Different moms, same dad. Um, but yeah, so he's he's in the gym all the time doing that, and uh, hopefully he can make that pro jump because I'm 32. He's obviously getting older, you know. So he wants to try to at least make some money and at least just try, you know. Right. And that's all you can do is just try. Remind me again, how many siblings? Like 18, 19, or something? 20. 20, including you. 21 Including kids. me, I might be 21. Damn. That is, and where do That's you fall? Lot, man. Where do you fall in the, uh, the age? I'm like the seventh oldest in terms of all my brothers have. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah, yeah. So I'm like the seventh oldest. Seventh. So it was all same dad, but different moms. Um, and my mom has 10 and two, and she had, and it's, yeah. And it's three dads in that picture. Um, my older sister, my older brother, and then she had the rest of the eight with my dad. Eight? So, she had 10 total? Yeah, yeah. My mom had 10 kids, yeah. Holy smokes. La the last ones were twins, man. Damn. Is she done? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. Have you ever had a moment where all of you guys were together? Probably a little uh, complicated, right? A little complicated, yeah. but... um. We have moments where we've had a good amount of us together where you could, I think it was maybe around 13, 12, 13 of us at a time, which is a lot. That still. is a lot. Um, okay, so yeah. now going back to the health, you you are are you 100% clear to fight or not yet? I think so. Okay. I'm being mean? honest, I think so. Did someone so say you're good to go? Situation. 
here's the situation. It's uh, I was clear to take to start a training camp at the six month mark, not to fight in six months. So that's where that's where the discrepancy came with with everyone. And I think that's where everyone kind of jumped the gun a little bit. And uh, I mean, I tried. I gave it an honest try and I just couldn't do it physically. I just couldn't do it. You know, so um, last thing I wanted to do, like people know that you can get a knee surgery, you can get a shoulder surgery and you're out for what, nine to 12 months. Usually that's like the, the normal time for the average person. And people are making it seem like I stubbed my toe. I didn't stub my toe. I, I had a neck surgery, which connects to every single thing in my body. If I want to take a shit, if I don't shit on myself, you know, it, it, that all comes from the, the neurological side for my brain to be able to control everything. So I got to be smart here. I can't just be jumping into something and people want to say I'm sparring. I mean, I got to spar to see where I'm at to see if I can fight. Mm -hmm. So if I spar and I see that I'm having trouble. OK, so that makes sense. People are making it seem like I'm like I'm ducking a fight. I want to fight the guy. I get paid to fight the guy. I want to make money. I haven't got paid in almost what, seven months now. So yeah. it'd be nice to make some money. And uh, I can't wait to do it when shove it up everyone's asses and have them just, you know, I'm going to be so petty, man. It's going to it's going to be um, <laughs> I like to be I try to be humble about my wins. You know, um, I always talk shit before the fights with all my opponents, but I always be humble about the wins. But this one this is something different where I just feel like it's deserved, you know. Um, and either way, if, if it, things knock on wood, things don't go my way and he decides to do the same thing, that's fine. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. I'm, I'm a man of my word. I back up my words and I, you know, I have no problem, you know, eating shit if I lose, you know, but at the same time, I really do in my heart feel like I'm better than this guy. And I can't wait to just have everyone just suck it. Well, you know, what's funny about this is that I feel like, look, uh, people can debate what happened, um, the aftermath, all that at the end of the day, regardless of what happened in that fight, take that fight away. You're still one of the top two, three best bantamweights on the planet. And yet people talk about you with all due respect to me, like you're me, like you're some Joe Schmo who fights for a li like who pretends to be a fighter. Like you're still freaking Aljamain Sterling. And I feel like at this point, people have forgotten that and your integrity is questioned and your skills are questioned. And that must drive you nuts. Like you're still a freaking UFC champion, fighter, contender who, who submitted Corey Sanhagen in 90 seconds. Like that's absurd stuff. And yet I feel like yeah. that has all been forgotten. You know what I'm saying? No, it, it drives me nuts. I think that's where, you know, I, I don't mind the banter from fans, but I think that's where I kind of get a little crazy where I'm just like, am I crazy? Or are these people just ridiculous, unreasonable people? And that's really what it is. So it's um, got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. And at the end of the day, I, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I know what I've done. I know what I've accomplished. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to say I have I'm tied for the second most wins in Benway history. And hmm. one of my wins doesn't even count because it was at 140 with Burrell between three other people, the, the one guy is TJ Dillashaw and I'm right there tied with two, I think two or three other people. So it's like, to discredit me is like, then, then who deserves credit? You know what I mean? So uh, at the end of the day, like I said, it's not like I stubbed my toe. Uh, this didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't throw the knee. You can say I acted all you want. You never been kneed in the head like that unexpectedly. It's like someone running up behind you in the street and just cold clocking you. You just, it's unexpected. You're not ready for it. You know? So at the end of the day, people can say what they want. I know what I've accomplished. And, um, uh, I'm excited to get back and remind the world who I am and what I've done and continue that, that, that ascension with my win streak and to cement my name in history as one of the best, if not the best man away in the world to ever do it in modern day history. You know, I'm um, obviously you got Dominic Cruz and, and uh, uh, Uriah Faber. They don't count their WC wins, which they right. should to, in all fairness, like how they did for strike force. Yeah. They should count those wins. Um, but those are the guys I'm chasing, man. I'm chasing to make history. And, and that's really it. I, I'm financially secure. I'm I'm living a good life. I'm happy where I've come from. I was just talking to my best friends from, from Uniondale. And I just go, it's just crazy. We're all in the group chat talking about the fight and they all saying what I should do. It's always funny when I talk with my friends because yeah. they all become coaches. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> um, but I was just telling them, I was like, dude, man, I'm just happy where I'm at. When I look back at it to, to know that a young kid from Uniondale, the stuff that we used to do growing up and now this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at in life. No one could ever take that away from me, and I'll, and I'll forever be proud of that, you know. So at the end of the day, um, I might talk shit. I might whatever. People might not like the things that I do, but uh, not everyone's for everybody. And at the end of the day, you still got to respect what I've done and accomplished in, in the sport and in this lifetime. So a couple of weeks ago, we had TJ Dillashaw on the show, and uh, he says that he's been promised a title shot next, which I think makes things a yeah. little bit iffy. I know he's coming off knee surgery. 
he doesn't think, he went out and said, essentially, in so many words, he doesn't think that you will fight again. He thinks at the I time- saw it. You saw that, okay. Uh, what, what, yeah, because people were tagging me and shit. Yeah. So I what was like, make? let me see what this <laughs> Muppet said, this Pillashaw guy said. And- uh, What'd you make oh, of yeah, that? And I want to say, before we go to this, TJ, uh, people, were, people were treating my resume as if I'm like, I just came on the scene. And I know disrespect to these guys, like the, the Paul brothers, like- I, I've been in this game for a very long time. I've been with the UFC for seven years, you know, seven years of hard work. Um, and I'm saying like the, the Paul brothers aren't working hard, you know, they're, but they're great promoters and they obviously don't have the skill set as people who have dedicated almost their entire livelihood to do, doing what they're kind of taking advantage of. But it's good for the sports, bringing eyes. But at the end of the day, you have to respect people who are or you should respect people who are actually going out there and putting in the work and trying to put on for themselves and are competing against the best guys in the world. I think that's fair for anyone even all the 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 russian people or the even the americans who talk shit and give me the clown emojis i i just don't get it it's like you would just think that i'd done nothing in this sport but to go to tj i I think he's ill-advised there's been other people who've had the surgery that actually came back compete alan joban being one of them and a couple of other guys that actually came back and competed now joban is a lot older than i am so for him to come back and even win a couple fights that's pretty damn impressive so i like to think that i'm in a very good spot um, based on what my doctors have told me, my situation where my other disc was also affected, the C5, C6, my C6, C7 is the one I got replaced. The C5, C6 is getting better because of me getting that replacement and it's straightening out my, um, it's fixing the curvature in my cervical spine. Mm. You know, so I'm in a good spot, man. I, like I said, I've been living with a lot of pain for a long time. And people were saying like, why'd you decide to get the surgery now? I couldn't train. If I can't train, how am I going to fight? So it's not like I would pick the convenient time to get the surgery. I picked the time to get the surgery where it was like, yo, I can't do anything else physically. So what other option am I left with? It's like I'm beating a dead horse saying this because these people hear what they want to hear and then they're going to say what they want to say anyway. It's like talking about the vaccine and everything. You know, people believe what they want to believe when it comes to politics. They believe what they want to believe. No matter what you say, it could be showing them proof and facts right in front of their face. The guy could be telling you the truth and who came up with the argument and people will still have some type of way to go around it and say, nah, nah, that just can't be true. Like, this is the world that we live in, the social media world that we live in. People are just nuts. Nuts. Okay, so at this point, you you say you sort of maybe been clear, but like, when do you think you'll get the full clearance? You're good to spar, you're good to do everything, like there's nothing holding you back. There's nothing holding me back. Oh, you could spar now? I stopped. I stopped. I stop sparring so that I can focus on the things that I need to focus on to get myself back. Okay. So now that that time has passed, I got another month of PT and, and uh, rehab and everything, getting the strength back in November. And from there, we start our training camp. And so you're so hoping- I'm, I'm slowly building. I'm still training. I'm training with Moreno and those guys, training with my guys back here in New York. And um, things have been going well. And if you ask me the type of trainings and the stuff I've been doing to people in the room, I, I, I like I like where I'm at now compared to where I was before, where I was kind of struggling to get through the practice sessions. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's that's the different mentality and the energy shift where I'm like, I think I'm back, baby. I'm, I, I'm back. I'm ready to go. Nothing holding you back. Nothing hold me back, baby. Nothing hold me. Not even the Island Boys, baby. I li- so so I, I hear January is full, obviously, with Nganu on the card and Moreno on the card. February still up in the air. So it seems like maybe February, March, it's it's conceivable that this happens. I don't want to wait till March. Okay. I, if I could fight this guy tomorrow, I, I would. But uh-huh. it, I mean, obviously, it doesn't work like that. I just have to, I have to really make sure I get myself prepared for five rounds again, which is not easy. You can't do that overnight. Um, but I'm just, I'm just eager. I'm just eager to get back out there, you know. And now I'm more eager to see what I could. I finally got questions answered about Pedion's abilities and his skills. He's the real deal. I just think I'm better. I truly do, do just think I'm better than him still. And uh, I think January or February, I think whatever happens, they might do a third title fight on that, on that card. Or if they have other obligations, they might push it to February. Hopefully not March. That would just be uh, – I just would year. not want to wait a year, you know. Another year layoff. I had my wrist surgery after um, beating Pedro Munoz. And uh, – I had a way to come back to fight Corey. You know, it's just that time period. It's just lost time. You know, I, I'm, I'm not getting younger. I need to make as much money as I can while I can in my prime. Use this vessel as best as I can. And um, that's the name of the game. 
get out while you still can and still, while you still have your brainy health intact. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's what I plan on and tend to do. So I don't want to be one of those guys who's hanging around when they're 40 and like kudos to Glover to share, but man, you see a lot of his past fights, you know, congrats to him to be able to stick through that. But man, those last few fights have been rough. Right. Like what does that do to you in the future? I mean, granted you can't put a price tag on someone's quality of life. Whatever is good for him is good for him. Doesn't mean that it's going to be good for me too. You know what I mean? So that's the way I kind of, judge things and, and kind of measure wh- where I'm at and what I want to do with everything that's going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and no fear that they're going to go to TJ. He said he was promised a title shot. Y- you're Fuck next. TJ. Fuck TJ. Let TJ wait. That bitch-ass motherfucker could wait. Just like that. Just like that. That guy's a fucking cheater. He had a close fight. A lot of people still don't even think he won the fight by hugging another man by the waist. At least I actually go for submissions. I think there's people that deserve to unify the belts that have the belts, right? Am I, am I crazy? How do you not unify the belts to try to, that makes no sense. Let TJ wait. And it's not my fault. He got his knee ripped off in that fight with Sanhagen, you know, that's on him. So it is what it is. He's got to wait just like everybody else has to wait their turn. He waited two years already, right? He could wait another couple of months. Mm. Final thing. Uh, do you want to send a message to Peter Jan? No, the, the only message I really have to say, and I, I know people probably say, oh, you should take advantage of the spot, but I, I don't I don't hate the guy. I think he's a good competitor. I still think he's a dirty fighter, though. Um, just check his track record with all his other fights. Um, I really do look forward to the chess match. I think this is going to be a really good close close battle. And I know like, once I get him down, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did where I came in not eating food and coming in, taking him down, and then trying to throw hammer fists instead of controlling the position, doing what I do. I, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. I know what I'm going to do in this next one. And uh, I think the blueprint is there. I'm a hard, hard fighter to hit. He hit me a lot in that last one. It's not going to be the same fight. You even look at the Moreno uh, Figueredo fight, the first one and the second one, completely different fight. One was completely dominate, um, domination. The other one was a lot closely contested. You know what I mean? So no two fights are the same when both guys get to actually prepare for each other. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for the future and uh, may the best man win. And I know that's going to be me. So everyone that keeps doubting me, put your money up and go get your betting slips because I guarantee you're going to go home sad. I can't wait. By the way, did you notice Joe Martinez said he was a two-time champ after he won? Did you notice that? I, I mean, technically, yes, because interim champions are considered actual champions because they get pay-per-view points. So for the next one, we both would actually be getting paid. That's good. Um, you know, which is good. So all these, all these people talking shit, man, behind the – those thumb pushers. I, I just hope these guys actually pay to watch the fight and don't try to go do no streaming shit. You talk all this shit, put your money where your mouth is to, to see who's actually going to win, you know? So um, that, that's pretty much it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future. This is one of the best divisions, and I'm proud to say that I'm at the top of it, you know? that Not everyone can say that. Not everyone can say they actually fought for a title. Not everyone can say they actually won a title, albeit not the way I wanted to. But at the end of the day, I know who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin, and I know what I'm capable of. This is going to be tremendous. I'm happy to hear you're okay. Thank you, as always, for doing this. Appreciate it. I think a lot of people were curious to hear how you felt about Saturday. And uh, for now, most important, good luck to Ray Janelle this Saturday. Oh, MSG. Yes, tune That's in. big time stuff. Will you be in his corner? Yes, sir. Let's go. Ray Janelle, yes, Bobby Green. That's a fun one. Can't wait. MSG the Fighting Owls are back, baby. The Let's Island go. Boys are back, <laughs> baby. The Long Island Boys. We're going to keep on going. Because we're Long Island Boys. I'm going to make more noise. <laughs> oh, I like, well, look at a little freestyle from Aljo. Aljo, thanks for the time, terrible. man. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. We'll, we'll look right, forward guys. to it. Thank you so much. Uh, there he is, Aljamain Sterling, the bantamweight champion of the UFC, giving us a little freestyle. Man, everyone loves the freestyle. Everyone loves the Island Boys. Come on, Virna jean Can we get a quick shot of Virna? See if she's okay. Virna, how's she doing over there? Quick shot of Virna. Oh, well, there she is. Virna Janjiroba immortalized. People wish, people dream of getting on this wall. I mean, we might have to, we might have to declutter this bad boy. I mean, there's, there's not that much real estate left, if I'm being honest. I see the Connor doll that unfortunately uh, broke is still up there. Um, but, you know, what has DC done for me lately? <laughs> you know, what has DC done for me lately? Not much, not much. He might have to get up on it here. Uh, I hear he's in New York. He wouldn't dare come by this studio. DC, you wouldn't dare come by this studio, would ya? Would ya? Would ya, DC? Would ya, DC? Would you dare come by this studio, Bapa? You wouldn't dare. 
You wouldn't dare. You're too busy doing God knows what. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a few. I mean, there's a lot of DC up here. I mean, maybe if I'm being honest, a little too much DC. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to see about that. You know, our next guest, he deserves a spot on the wall. Should be on the wall. Absolute legend. Coming off a big win. Great answer at the end of his win. Even sold T-shirts with our good friends over at Breaking Tea. By the way, Thug Knows out right now. BreakingTea.com. Check it out. Uh, I was thinking of this man on Saturday after Glover Teixeira did his thing because uh, he is obviously linked to Glover and it's his division. And so I thought, you know what? Let's call upon one of the best analysts and fighters in the game to help uh, make sense of it all. And so without further ado, our final guest of the day. Oh, Joe called an audible on me. I was just about to go. I was just about... Okay, low bandwidth. Yeah. We can do audio with him. No, we don't want to do audio with Anthony Smith. I mean, Anthony Smith is a good-looking fellow. I want to see his face. Usually, he's got top-notch quality uh, internet. Bandwidth low. He's on a bus. <laughs> he's on a bus. He's on... Okay, I guess we have to do audio. Anthony? Yeah, I'm right you're, here. You're on a bus? I'm on a bus, Ariel. What are you doing on a bus? I'm driving to Kansas City for Monday Night Football. You're kidding me. No. How far are you from Kansas City? Uh, I don't know. We'll probably, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe. You couldn't have drove after the appearance? It's only like 20 minutes. No, the Kansas City is like four hours from where I live. Really. There he is. Wait, are you driving the bus, Anthony? Yeah. No, I'm riding. Wait, I'm riding. whose bus is this? <laughs> One of my friends. <laughs> this is amazing. Is it like a, a Volkswagen Westphalia bus? Because that's my dream car. No, it's like a old, like short school bus. Oh my like, gosh! Painted red. He owns it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you a Kansas City Chiefs fan? No, I'm not actually. <laughs> I'm not. So why are you going I to this today. game? Why are you going to this game? No, just I don't know. Monday Night Football just sounded like a fun thing to do. Yeah, it is a fun thing to do. Well, thanks for doing this. I do that. I, I actually do stuff like that a lot. Like, I'll go with my friends and go, like, support their team and just mingle, like, in their groups. It's a lot of fun. I yeah, yeah. So you're going to tailgate and do all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate you uh, squeezing us in here while you're on your bus ride to Kansas City. <laughs> um, I do some I do some weird shit here. Yes, I mean this is this is a good one. I like it. I like the lighting in there. Can you give us a bit a, a quick tour of the bus? Can you turn the camera around? We're giving a tour of the bus, Sean. Yeah, put your pants on, guys. All right, yay! There we go. <laughs> Look at that. A lot of Chiefs fans. By the way, could you ask your friends? Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I think I I I presume they're big Chiefs fans. These guys that you're with. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, maybe, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. I missed the Sunday night game a couple weeks ago when the Bills played the Chiefs. Can you ask them who won that game? <laughs> I'm just curious. I missed it. Ask them who won that game. Oh man, uh, Howie, they he wants to he wants to know who won the Chiefs versus Bills game. He missed it. <laughs> the Bills did. <laughs> That's right. You could show them this. He went to bed early. He missed it. You could show them this shot right here. Oh, yeah. That's right. Bills That's Mafia, so baby. Off. Bills Mafia, baby. <laughs> All right, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, now let's talk business, uh, Anthony. Uh, you're good. You're it, good. It's a little, it's a little no, choppy, no. but we're gonna fight through it. What did you think when you saw Glover Teixeira, a guy that you'll always be linked to? You fought him back in May of 2020 when he got the belt at 42, and he finally got gold. What was going through your mind? You know, if if you would have told me that someday I was gonna be in a position where I was that happy and that proud of somebody like for winning something that I want so bad, uh, I would have told you you were crazy, but um, I, I, I wanted to cry watching it, to be honest with you. It was, it was just a really cool moment. I, I was really happy for him. Just know, I know the work that goes into it. I know the, the sacrifice, the, the things he's been through. I know what his body has to feel like if he's engaged and I know what mine feels like right now. Um, just, you know, I've said it to you before, like if anything good was going to happen in the world, it would be... <laughs> Would be glad to share of being able to retire someday as a champion at the end of the day. Uh, I think uh, all was right in the world for at least that night. 
Incredible. Did you think he would win going into the fight? Did you think he would win? And if you thought he would win, did you think it would be like that, like pure dominance or, you know, maybe a, a three, two, four, one decision? I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I knew he had, he had the power in his hands. And, and, and I said all week that the first guy that ended up on top was likely going to win the fight. They're both dominant grapplers, but not from the back. Uh, they're, they're both really top pressure heavy guys. So I thought if Glover could get on top, he could wear him out for sure. Um, and he hit, he hit Jan with the same overhand left he hit me with. Um, that changed the whole game for me as well. It is funny, though, for all the people that used to trash me all the time about, you know, how, how bad Glover beat me up. Had Jan been able to handle what was going on in that fight with him, I think it would have looked exactly the same. Uh, Jan just didn't start to fight off as well as I did. So I think it, that loss has aged really well for me right now. Absolutely. Um, if someone would have told you around the time that you fought him, that eventually he would win the belt. Would you believe them? Before? No, no, after your fight. Like, hey, you know, this guy is actually yeah, going to... for sure. Really? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, he... I, I don't want to say I underestimated him because I feel like that's taken away from, from what he's been able to do. But it, there was a lot of things I thought going into that fight that I didn't believe afterwards. Uh, I guess that's probably a better way of saying it. But uh, afterwards, I was a believer for sure. Like what? Like what did you think that he kind of made you a believer in? I thought, I thought I could get him tired um, at some point. Uh, I, thought, I thought if I landed a big shot, he would go down. Um, you know, I, I just, I underestimated his, just his pure toughness. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he just, and I knew he was going to be a tough guy, but you know, he, he was an aging guy. I thought, I thought if I showed him the door, he'd walk out of it, and he didn't. Amazing. Do you think he should retire right now? No. No, you can't get the title and then not not cash the pay per view money check. That's right. That's right. You got to get a few, you got to get as many of those as you can. So it seems like Yuri is next for him. Yuri Prochaska. Who do you uh, who do you favor in that fight? I'm gone, dude. I think Glover. Really? I, I I may I may not have said that before the Jan Bohovic fight, but uh, you know, of course, I tell myself well, if I hadn't got hit with that one big shot, I think the game was going to be different, but. Uh, he was able to land it on a guy who didn't get very many shots landed on him by his rod Sonya. So uh, he was able to land a big shot. He dealt with the, you know, the, the, the range problem fairly well. Uh, John Mahomes is really hard to take down and he didn't have any problem doing it. So Yuri Prohaska is much more hittable than John Mahomes is. Uh, Dominic Reyes hit a takedown on Yuri. Uh, if Dominic Reyes can end up on top and mounted, uh, I have no doubt that Glover's chair can do the same. Wow. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that story. Your story is very interesting as well because we saw you not that long ago. Nice win for you. You keep the uh, the good vibes rolling. Everything all right? What's going on? You looking off to the side? Oh, I'm just speaking. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Movement. Sorry. 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 Weirded me out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you have the great line, you know, Merry Christmas to me. You saw the T-shirts, Breaking Tea. It's great stuff. You and Alexander Rakic. Rakic says, sign me up. Um, he's down December, last card of the year, December 18th. Now I understand, no longer a thing. Why is that? So I, I knew that there was something going on with my knee, but I didn't know how bad it was. Uh, I, I've been kind of dealing with it for a little while anyways. I don't probably the last, I don't know, probably the last five fights. I just like I haven't been able to run in training camp at all. Been all like we we had to kind of work my strength conditioning around my kind of my knee. So I kind of tweaked it in the fight when I was taking Ryan Spans back, but I just I didn't want to take the hook out and lose the position, so I just left it in there. Um, kind of I kind of heel hooked myself essentially and tore my LCL. So it wasn't a complete tear. We did stem cells. We did the PRP injections. Um, Thought I was going to be down for eight weeks. Not a big deal. Um, but because I already had other knee problems, we thought it was a perfect opportunity to go in, clean out a lot of the, just the cobwebs and cartilage and scar tissue and just a lot of the problems I've been having with it. Uh, it wasn't going to extend my time off anymore because that's about a month in itself and it was early enough that it wouldn't have extended anymore. So long story short, I, I end up having a whole lot more problems after the scope. Uh, and got staph infection uh, oh. in the joint. Yeah, so now I'm on IV antibiotics for another month. Um, they had to go back in. They had to wash it out, trim tissue, 
uh, scraped the back of my kneecap. It was a, it was a disaster. Uh, so a routine, regular, you know, two or three days down and back on my feet. Uh, that, that, that was two and a half or three weeks ago. I had the, the original scope. Um, I think that I think it was three weeks ago, and I just now got off the crutches three days. Ago. Wow. And was that their mess up? Like, how did you get the staff from that? No one really knows. No one really knows. It, it could be that we were just in there so many times because I was, once I had, once I had the tear, the first tear, my knee swelled really bad. So they were taking a lot of fluid and blood and a draining in a bunch. And then we did the stem cells and PRP injections. So there was a bunch of injections and needles going in and out of the joint. And then I did the scope. So then the you know the, the tools they used for the scope, and then they drained it again. And then they were draining it every two days after that, uh, trying to get the swelling down and get the fluid off the joint. So there was just a lot of shit going in and out of my knee, you know, in a really short period of time. So I, I would suspect that you know the staff on your skin, anyways, right, all the time. So I, I I think just so many injections in the same area and open wounds, and you know, it's just just. I don't know. It's just my luck, I suppose. Was that like an emergency thing? Oh. I was praying to the uh, the Wi-Fi gods or whatever it is, the LTE gods, the 5G gods. That uh, the, Oh, he's back. Anthony, you back? You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm right here. Okay. What, 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 um, was that a, was that a, uh, emergency thing that you had to, when you had to go in there to clean up the, the staff? What, what, like, what transpired there? How did it go down? Yeah. So when they drained it the last time, they sent that in to be cultured, like, so that in, the infectious disease doctors could check it out. And then the next morning, um, they called and said, you got it. That was, that was last Wednesday. They said, you have to be here. You know, we're going to go back in. We got to clean it up. You got to get in here now. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'll go to Vegas this weekend and work the desk. And then we'll, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll take care of it then. Like, I thought it wasn't that big of a deal. So I was supposed to work the, not this last weekend, but the weekend before. Uh, and on Wednesday, they were like, no, you have to be here in an hour. So wow. I was there. And, yeah, I was there. And they put me back out and did it again. So realistically, when can you return now? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, cause now I've been down. So I went from the original injury to the injections to the, then the scope and now the washout. Uh, now, now I, I start rehab tomorrow. Um, because I've lost, like, I, there's a lot of atrophy. Like my left leg is significantly larger than my right leg. Now. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to battle, kind of battle back from that a little bit, but I would guess February, March, April, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like the the rematch is probably off the table. Yeah. Sounds like it. Uh, sounds like we got someone else though. Oh. What do you mean? I, I'm I'm kind of liking this Jan Bohmans fight. Oh. Okay. I'm liking this Jan Bohmans fight. Have you expressed it that to like, the press? They brought it to me. After. Yeah, that night. That night. He's, he's ready. He wants to fight. He wants to fight again. Like, he wants to fight soon. But for you, I mean, you're still five, six months away, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, could, I mean, I'm not crazy injured. I'm just dealing with a lot of little sure. stuff, infections. So, I mean, as long as we can get the infection cleared up, I don't think February is out of the question. Okay, so you, you're down. Yeah, for sure. It's so funny. I love that fight. I, and I, I, like, I like that guy. I like that guy. Uh, I want the Rackage fight. I want that back. Um, but I, I don't think he wants to wait, uh, which is fine. If he wants to go on and find someone else, that's fine as well. Um, but yeah, I like, I like the Yonko Holmes fight. It's funny that you say that because first I was asking, like, all right, is the Rackage fight off the table? The follow-up was going to be, I expected you to say, yes, it's off the table. Oh, well, then it seems like maybe Jan would be available because you'll probably want a little bit of time off and then get right back in there. But uh, the good folks at the UFC uh, were, were quicker than I. So, wow, right on the spot on Saturday, reaching out to you. And I don't think you've ever... Have you ever even turned down a fight? Like, are you, you're not really that type of guy. And I'm assuming the never. former champ... No, never. I'm, I'm assuming the former champ makes... I mean, probably, dare I say, I don't know, the other one's personal, but, like, this is probably just as interesting, if not more interesting, than Rakic, right? 
Well, yeah, it is a little bit. It yeah. is a little bit. And it's, it's because it's a funner fight. Mm-hmm. So like, remember I was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to a title and, and Rakic was my path to the title. He was the, you know, say he's the next guy after Yuri, but he's going to have to fight again. Uh, I get to avenge that loss. And he's the highest ranked guy coming off of a win. Right. So that on top of being able to kind of, you know, smooth my own ego was, was the fight to, to make. Jan Bohovic does all of those things. And I really like that guy. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a better matchup. <laughs> Like, I, it's no secret. I've said over and over that Alexander Rakic is the toughest guy in the division for me. That's the worst possible matchup in the entire division for me. Uh, and it, but it's a winnable fight. I know I can beat that guy. I've been in there with him. I've felt him. I know, I know what it's like. Um, but it's the, it's the worst matchup in the division for me. Jan Blachowicz is a, is a good dude. He's not going to run for me. He's not, he's not going to avoid the fight. He's going to get in the fire. Uh, like, the buildup to it is going to be fun and not all the stupid shit that I hate. Like, and he's higher ranked, and a former champion. Mm-hmm. And, but, but how cool would it be to to like, I don't know, fight, fight Jan, beat him, and then Glover beats Jerry. Like, what a what a storybook ending right there. Oh my you know? gosh! Well, I was gonna. I, I think Rackage probably wants to be figured into that equation as well, um, but. Listen, you can't figure yourself into any equations when he turns down fights all the time. I like him. I got no problems with him. But it's no secret that he's turned down several fights. Okay. Regardless of that, your story, after all the controversy, May of 2020, Jacksonville, early days of the pandemic, empty arena, you should get rid of your corner. They wronged you. They did this. You come back in there against Glover for the belt. And win the title like that, holy! I mean, that is true. I feel like your career can't end any other way. It's been such a roller coaster. Your career, like that, is storybook stuff. That is movie stuff, right there. Yeah, well, I remember, I remember uh, being on the phone with you mm-hmm. the next day. Remember that? Remember yeah. having that conversation? I was still in Florida. Yep. Uh, just, just, I, I maybe the listeners and you guys, your, your, your fans watching, like, I think sometimes people miss like Ariel is. Is a fan is, is a fan of the sport and he, and he truly gives a shit about the fighters. So like, he's never told anybody that I sat and poured my heart up. You know what I mean? He's never told anybody that. But I was kind of lost in that moment, like having that conversation. Like, the hell do we do now? You know, like the, this wasn't supposed to happen, and, and I was just I couldn't believe what had just happened. You know, so to go from that to I don't know, maybe having an opportunity to to. I don't, you know, if he can win and, and the stars align and I get that fight and, and, and I can get through Jan Bohovic, which isn't an easy task, but it's definitely winnable. You know, like that's, uh, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's how it's supposed to end. Yeah. But then you have to, of course, fight him, win the belt, and then get the pay-per-view points that you were talking about. You got to you had to retire and, on the and, side. Yeah. 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 Maybe for a minute. Right, 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 right. You like retire in the press conference and then book a fight like the next week. Well, the movie could end with you winning the belt. Like the movie doesn't have to end with the it ends with the title victory, and then like people can yeah. go figure out what else happened on the back end. But the movie, the actual you know film, the script ends that night. Wow. Okay, I love this. This is fun. So uh, I'm just gonna put the tweet out now. Breaking news: Anthony Smith, Jan Bohovic booked for February. Accurate? Inaccurate? I'm just joking. I'm kidding. I was like, I mean, there's nothing booked. I'm still <laughs> I'm a little bit banged yeah, up. But, I'm kidding, I'm but we should we should just put it out. We should just put it out there though, and just just have it go, and we'll just start booking press conferences and shit. And UFC just like, well, look, he just did he did our job for us. Listen, um, not the first time that I do the UFC's job for them, if we're being honest. But it's with pleasure. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just don't want any strikes that's again. Right, that's right. That's right. Should we talk about Houston? No, I don't think we're ready to talk about Houston just yet. I mean, the early days of Hilo. We're not. We'll save that for another time. Yeah. Anthony. Um, well, I can't wait to tell that story. It is a good story, isn't it? I mean, it's one of the all-time. Great I had, stories. I had a couple people call me after we we talked about that, like like close friends, like not like fight-related people. They were like, what is Ariel talking about? <laughs> and I told him the story. I told him the story like beginning to end. And they were like, no way. Ariel Hawani for life. That's what they kept saying. So they'll tweet it and hashtag and like our group messages sometimes like Ariel Hawani for life. That's right. It's funny. That's right. They don't know. They don't know what they're dealing with. A story for a different day. 
Uh, for now, thank you for joining us from the bus. Can you tweet us after when you're when you're done? Can you tweet us uh, like a picture? Is there is there like Chiefs logos on this bus? It's red. I want to visualize what this bus looks like. Oh yeah. Okay. If you can do yeah, that for yeah, me. Yeah, I'll get you some pictures. All right, thank you. Text, tweet, whatever you want. Uh, you. Enjoy the game tonight. Thank you for doing this. I'm happy to hear that you're okay. And I love the idea of this Jan fight. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thanks, as always, for doing this, Anthony. Thanks, Ariel. Take care, brother. All right. There he is, Anthony Smith. Uh, coincidentally, the uh, connection got, uh, it was the best at the very end over there. Did you guys notice that or was it just me? Um, so that's fun. That is fun. Bills, Chiefs, great win for the Bills uh, yesterday against the Dolphins. It's not the best win, if I'm being honest, because like it was way too close in the first half. Uh, but the second half, they poured it on. You know what's funny? You know, we're talking about Glover Teixeira um, on this program, 42, second oldest fighter to win a title in UFC history. I noticed at the post-fight press conference, Dana White was talking about Fyodor. I got a text afterwards from Jerry Millen, who's very close to Fyodor, and they want to respond and do all this stuff it feels like it's you know it's 2010 2011 all over again but the funniest part of that statement was which i you know i think Fyodor is doing pretty well if i'm being honest i think he's doing pretty well he says if you would have taken the deal that we offered him back in 2010 mind you 2010 11 years ago he wouldn't still be fighting at 45 um and the irony of saying that on the day a 42 year old now 42 isn't 45 but it's still 42 and it's the second oldest person to win a UFC title, to say that on the day that a 42-year-old wins a UFC title, literally like 30 minutes, 40 mi 45 minutes later, is, is rich. I mean, the irony is fantastic there. Um, and of course, on cue, there's Scott Coker tweeting up a storm saying his light heavyweight division is better. And, and, and they have a case, they have a legitimate case now because before... Jan and, and Corey were one and one. Corey Anderson has a win over Glover Teixeira. Several years ago, still a win. I believe Glover's last loss. Now, Corey has to beat Vadim Nemkov, but if Vadim Nemkov beats him or if Corey Anderson beats Vadim, for the first time in a very long time, Bellator could seriously make that claim. And that's all they need. They need to be in the debate. They need to be in the conversation. And so it's fun times, very fun times. I really like that fight, Jan versus uh, Anthony Smith. And I'm curious now what they're going to do with, with Rakic because if Yeri Prochaska is going to fight for the belt, by the way, I'm looking at the UFC ranking page. I only look at the UFC ranking page not to actually see the rankings, but just to see the guys or the gals in front of me, the names. It's just the easiest way to get them quickly. They still have Jan listed as champion. Yuri fighting for the belt against Glover. If Smith is fighting Jan, maybe Dominic Reyes return. I mean, there's there's no real, there's no good answer out there. Magomed Ankalaev? I don't know. Interesting. Maybe I'll reach out to Mr. Rakic. Let's reach out to him on the spot. Should we do that right now? Hello, I'm on the air. Who is going to be next for you um, now that Anthony needs more time after his recent scope? When you type, do you normally think like that? Yes, I do. Well, I'm trying to tell the people. I mean, this is a visual and uh, an audio show. Um, please... Let us know as we are on the air right now. How about that? Live on the air. We're getting the scoop. We'll see if Alexander uh, responds to us. For now, though, uh, we are going to go to our good man, GC, to get a recap as to how he did this past week in the world of MMA. But before we do that, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings. So this is interesting. Of course, UFC in New York, I thought maybe we would go with some New York theme music. Instead, we're going with some New Orleans theme music, right? Bourbon Street. Is it Bourbon or Bourbon? Bourbon. Bourbon Street? 
Have Bourbon, you ever, Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street. Is this our clean end? Right no, now? this is not. This is not the clean end. Uh, Cafe du Monde. One time, I had a uh, a beignet with Mike Breen. I, I don't mean to name drop, but I was there for the uh, New Orleans Pelicans Dallas Mavericks game a couple years ago when I was sort of moonlighting as an NBA sideline reporter. I mean, one of the highlights of my life, if I'm being honest. And uh, this music reminds me of that. It's beautiful music. Um, and and if I, you know, honestly, like you can listen to this kind of music at any point. <clears throat> That's a clean end. I was giving you the pause. You wanted a pause. That was my pause. The first time Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington met in the octagon, the battle lasted five rounds. Sort of. It didn't go the distance. Who writes this copy? Who's in charge? <laughs> I just ruined it, right? Did I just ruin yeah, it? Yeah, you just ruined it. I mean, it. look, I got, I got the copy late, and there's an inaccuracy in the first line. So, okay. It's always I'm, somebody else's fault. I'm going to watch me edit this on the fly. This is how talented I am. The first time Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington met in the octagon, it was an all-time classic. This Saturday at UFC 268, $5 can net you $200 with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on either fighter and $200 in free bets if they do. Can the Nigerian nightmare hold on to his welterweight title or will chaos claim it? Bet just five dollars on the UFC 268 main event and win two hundred dollars if your fighter wins. DraftKings, by the way, is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want it. Now, this is what you have to do: download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code the MMA Hour. Don't forget the the. Throw down just five buckaroos on the UFC 268 main event and win two hundred dollars in free bets. That's two hundred dollars. In free bets. If your fighter wins, that's code the MMA Hour this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit required. Free bet promotion. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Yeah. Now, last time when the, uh, the song reached its conclusion you replayed the song why didn't you do that this time so it felt like a very abrupt ending this this one sounded good when it ended in the you middle felt of like the that reading. was good yeah okay all right that and this one has to go in the can for a while what do you mean well so last time i was able to use an are we really getting into this right yeah now? yeah yeah i want to know okay <laughs> so you do a recording every now and then and that's going to be put on the podcast yeah until we change it out Okay. Right. So sometimes the live recordings don't really impact what's going to be on the podcast. Okay. Today is like a fresh start. We we're putting another one in the can, so I can't do any crazy editing with it. I understand, but you know that this one is going to be outdated come next week. I do understand that. So All I'm right. just doing it for Wednesday. Oh, okay. Fair cool. enough. I mean, I could do it again. Yeah. I could can. do it again. But we're not going to. We're going to do a GC. Without further ado, let us say hello to the man of the hour who suffered a heartbreaking weekend two weekends ago, trying to get back on his feet, trying to rebound, much like his Atlanta Braves are going to try and rebound this Tuesday. Let us say hello now to the one and only GC, who is kind enough to join us via the magic of the control room. My guy, GC, how are you, sir? Okay, uh, microphone not working. Microphone checka, mic a microphone checka. I don't hear you. Oh, check one, two, three. You're yeah, back. Yeah. You're back. Right. A little lower than usual. Uh, I think Frank can fix that. Okay, raise it up. I feel like he's a bit thrown off after. Uh... I mean, we should have done rehearsals or something. We did know. do a rehearsal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, you're sporting a new look. I like this look. We've yeah, shaved. I guess we can tackle that real well, quick. Well, I mean, it's I got, right there. I got the mustache yeah, what, going you on. want me to ignore it right off the bat? I mean, it's right there. Yeah, I mean, I do it every year, rocking it for uh, Movember, raising awareness, raising money for uh, for the charity Movember. Um, you know, men's cancer, men's men's health awareness, men's suicide prevention, everything like that. So, uh, you know, I figured this year we we put a little something on the line. So, starting this weekend with UFC 268 and Bellator 270, going all the way through November. Uh, all my winnings, I'll donate 50% of them to Movember. And if I lose, if we're losing units all, all November, hopefully that doesn't happen, though. Yes. If we do that, I'll match my losses. So we'll double the losses. I'll match my losses, and I'll donate that to Movember. And whatever you uh, – well, look at that. High five there? 
You get another wow. mysterious frying Amazing. hand in there. Yeah. Every once in a while, you get that hand. Uh, and I will, whatever you win, whatever you donate, I am going to donate as well. There you go. You're matching. I'm so matching. it's like I'm giving 100% of my winnings. Let's but go. I got to. Got to pay the rent here in NYC. So no, I'm I, respect, I mean, I saw your bootleg uh, AirPods that you were rocking. Yeah, I do have the fake uh, twenty dollars Amazon AirPods. Where does someone get that? Off Amazon? A- Amazon. Really? Okay, yeah. I thought it was yeah. like you know. Yeah, I try to hide the logo on it. So I mean, it's right the train, there. Don't judge me. They also look a little bit different. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do they sound the same? Oh yeah, exactly the same. I mean, they work great. Now, before we get into the picks, uh, just have to ask because I think the the rest of the MMA community buzzing over this. Uh, have has there been any interaction between GC and New York Rick? Yes, there has I mean, been. What's it been like? Tension? It's been fantastic. No, no there's tension. no tension at all. <laughs> it's been welcoming. It's It's been great. I mean, he's hard at work back there. I've been trying not to bother him during the show. Who knows but, what he's doing back there? We see the hair. Po- don't, don't. We, I don't want to see him, but I, I think I see the hair poking through. It's kind of like a, a slow reveal. Did you guys ever... Uh, did I think you guys I saw some solitaire going on back there. Yeah, no, there's no way he's actually working. Um, did you guys ever cross paths in Bristol? No, nah, no, never cross paths. Really, not even nah. when, you know he works late. Not even when you're doing game night or something like that. Nah, not even on game night, man. I mean, we're down in the trenches in radio. Where they they keep us in a hole. They they make it so no one no one can see us. But they uh, they forced us together. They forced us to sit by each other in the control room. So we had to uh, you know break we bread. Kit Kats. How can you not? I mean, yeah. yeah. Instead of breaking bread, we we broke the Kit Kats. It was great. And of course, tough night for you last night. What time did you go to bed? Uh, like twelve thirty. Yeah, I mean, you get the grand slam in the first inning. I'm, I'm, I'm already on Fanatics.com, getting ready to shop oh all the championship gosh. gear. It's uh, got two more chances though. Yeah. I think they're gonna do it. Is this I think the first time, it. by the way, that you're not wearing some kind of Atlanta inspired gear? Yeah, you know, I mean, speaking of that, yeah, we got yeah, Puma here. We'll yeah. rub the, uh, rub the brand, but, but nothing. Uh, Are you down on on Atlanta? Nah, just a little bit crisp. Chris, I, today I sort of, rocking a hoodie. Yeah, but I sort of feel like, you know, when your team is down, you got to up the, like, I would come with more gear when my team is down. I had my outfit picked you out. Did I it. had them picked out if we won. I was going to rock the Braves jersey, all that. Uh, but we'll save that for Wednesday when they get it done on Tuesday night. Nice shot of the president, the former president, the 45th president doing the old tomahawk <laughs> chop. <laughs> I did see that. Uh, yeah. Uh, if this was my former home, our former home, this would have been cut out of the conversation. Just the mere mention. Of his name would have been cut out, but uh, we yeah we probably would have gotten the uh, late nights on game night. We would have <laughs> yes, that's right. Did you see the clip of uh, Melania looking away from him? <laughs> no, you didn't see that. I mean, that was great no. stuff. In any event, uh, let's talk about this past week. Uh, what do you got? Were you up? You on? Right? You're back. Yes. Yep. We are back. We we cleared all the losses. We'll we'll start real quick with the PFL last Wednesday. It's old news at this point. Omari Agmedov, he kills the parlays. He's minus three thousand because PFL really likes to. I don't love seeing the live odds if, if I'm not planning on live betting it. PFL kind of rubs it in your face. Oh, geez. You, uh, you see the live odds. Akhmedov was minus 3,000 going into the, into the third round, then he gets knocked out. I was actually on the way home watching that. I was 2-0 and already on the day. I was watching it on the subway. We go into a tunnel, and Akhmedov had him in a choke. I thought we were going to come out of the tunnel to a winner. Instead, it reboots, and oh. like, he's wobbled, he's shaking, and then he gets knocked out. It was... Uh, yeah, it was terrible to lose Wi-Fi at that point. Uh, but it didn't even really matter. Cabaloza, Delija, I had that to not go the distance. Somehow they made it all five rounds. Um, so, yeah, that was just a loser. So we lost the unit there. It was any way you flip it, we were losing that one. So uh, PFL, not great. All right. Uh, but then UFC 267. Let's go. We bounce back. Uh, we'll start with the singles here. We, we Technically, we went two and two, but we hedged with Glover. So we went three and two. We, we got a fantastic opportunity with all the parlays ending with Jan to be able to hedge out on Glover to guarantee a pretty profitable day. As you can see, we lost Jan and we lost Tomos there, but we got Amanda Hebus. A lot of people were on Virna. I know you were especially on her, the island boy and everything, but I mean, she looked in those last two rounds, she looked pretty good. Jan Sandhagen got a little sketchy uh, when Sandhagen started to get a little wobbly there. I think it was at the end of the third or right, at the right. end of the fourth round. Um, but we ended up getting that one. Blahovich. We had a lot of stock in Blahovich, right. man. Um, yeah, so uh, we can move on here from the from the singles to the, to the parlays. Uh, so we can really see how much stock we had in, uh, in Blahovich. I mean, yeah, look at all that green and then the red on each one of them. Oh. Blahovich, 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 man. So that's why you hedge. A lot of people were like, we should we should let it ride. We should let it ride. As, as confident as I was in Jan, confidence in gambling is kind of a mirage. Um, yeah, I told a lot of people we were up 4.96, but I forgot about the two uh, 
the 267, 268 parlay right. special that got killed, as you can uh, see, with Jan. I mean, a lot of red from Jan there. It was uh, it was tough. We really would have been living large if uh, if Jan had did it. He kills the air fryers. You can see a plus 728. He kills it in the last leg. I mean, oh my God, look at that parlay there. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So if we if we can get the full recap up here, we go we go singles uh, three and two technically up 3.55. Parlays essentially you break even after everything. On UFC 267, we finish up 3.46. So now, even after the PFL loss, we're right back to where we were before any of the losses. It's like it never even happened. We get a nice reset going into 268. Um, yeah, it was a great day. What were you before that last one? Before the losses, yeah. we were 13.73. Oh, wow. Now we're 13.69. So essentially, we're we're right back to where we were. Um yeah, Jan, man. We had visions of grandeur. I was on Amazon. I was on Sears. I was price checking air fryers. Sixteen quart. Eight. What would quart, you have ended up with? Basket. Uh, we would have ended up about like ten units. Wow. Up. Yeah. Yeah. And the hedge. I've never understood the hedge really. Like, can you explain the mindset behind that? Because yeah, man. So we were we had two parlays that would have cashed had Jan won, and the two sixty seven, two sixty eight would have continued to ride had Jan won. So essentially, the 728 is riding on a minus 300 favorite. The the plus 115 is riding on a minus 300 favorite. So now, Jan is essentially for me a plus 728 bet and a plus 115 bet. So I can hedge out by betting on the underdog here in Glover Teixeira to like lock in the profits. Wow. Which I'm glad we did because Glover made it look easy. Sure, sure, sure. Now, what would uh, you may not have done this math, but. What would you have ended up with had you not hedged? Had I not hedged, yeah. it would have been up maybe like 0. 0.7 right. units. Yeah, so it was. I think it was a good call to hedge. Um, you don't go full in to where it's even if Glover wants, because I, I I was confident confident in Jan, but uh, it uh, it did not work out that way. I mean, if we were going to lose, though, I guess I would, of anyone, I would like to lose to Glover. I mean, great story. The pride of Dan Barry, Connecticut. Of course. Yeah, they were. Uh, I, I think you watched it in Connecticut, right? I did watch it in Connecticut. I should have gone to Dan yeah. Barry. I should have gone to the uh, to a, a Glover watch party. Right. Were they dancing in the did. streets in uh, Connecticut? Or yeah, I mean, they, I, I assume there's going to be some sort of parade for Glover in downtown Danbury. It's, it's going to be exciting. Have spot. you been to Danbury? Uh, I've been through it on the train. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So that's the story as far as 267. Just a quick gander as far as 268 is concerned. Some interesting ones, right? Colby Covington. A lot of interesting stuff, yeah. I'm seeing plus uh what is it on DraftKings? Plus two fifty, minus three twenty. You surprised by that? Not closer? Last fight was two two going into the fifth. Yeah, it was. Um I don't know. I think Kamara's gotten better since he has then. Gotten I don't know how much Colby's improved. I, I could see the exact same result happening. I mean, you mentioned that like Hamzad and Islam. They yeah. were both minus six hundred all week. I was I was seeing, you know, there's so much value on Hooker, there's so much value on Lee, gotta take the flyers. Uh, you know, these are incorrectly priced. Yeah, and then like you see that were they incorrect? No, they I mean, were they not. Looked like, they looked like minus three thousand people going out there. They looked like Kayla Harrison in the PFL. Like they they made it look easy. Odds makers in MMA have come a long way. So uh, who the hell am I to question them? Although I will say, Rose Namajunas and Jung are pick them right now. Minus one ten, yeah. minus one ten. Imagine that first yeah. round knockout in like two minutes, less than two minutes, yeah. and a pick them right now. I almost feel like because it was so quick, right. Like, the odds makers are giving it the fluke aspect, but you're the stat guy. You dropped that stat about uh, the immediate rematch. Can you find it? It's somewhere out there. I, I found it. You it's, found uh, it? Yeah, they're nine and one. and they've Nine and one? Nine. Really? Yeah. The person that took the belt yes. in the immediate rematch is has won nine straight in their nine and one overall. That's crazy. Do you know who the one is off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head, but I got it bookmarked. Yes. Somewhere. Yes, this is something that I've said, and it really came to light um, after Cody and TJ fought twice and after Rose and Joanna fight twice, fought twice, excuse me, when they do the immediate rematch, the person who lost the belt in the first fight, as we just pointed out, 90% of the time will lose the second fight. And so in this case, that's Zhang Wei Li. She had the belt. She lost it. She's going back again. Yeah, Ro Rose actually did it once against Jay Chen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the one that got it back was Randy Couture. Against uh, Vitor Belfort. Wow. So way early. Hey, you got to go day. way back. I wonder Other if that's that, the first one ever. Straight. That might be the first one ever, the first time that it happened. Yeah, so nine straight. At that, like, obviously none of these fights have anything to do with each other, but I do think there's something to it in the fact that, you know, the fighter 
especially when you get knocked out, lack of confidence, starts questioning themselves. You know, it's the same person. They have, uh, by the way, it happened with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. He lost again, right? Media rematch, lost the second time, lost the third time. So I don't know. You also, uh, Jang said she, she does not like it when the crowd boos. Mm -hmm. She said that affects her fighting. And I would imagine in New York City, it, it will probably be a fairly, a fairly pro-Rose crowd. It'll be a partisan crowd. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to go against Rose, man. Mm, she's very I mean, well Because what if it's not a fluke? What if, what if she just gets it done again easy and you, you can get that at even odds? Yes, we're dropping the Thug Nose t-shirts. All proceeds, by the way, going to Rose Namunas' favorite charity. I'm just letting you know. I know, I love it. Um, Charities everywhere. I mean, it's all, I don't make a cent off of it. I just want to let you know. What is a charity? Let me try to pull this up here if I can. Um, because uh, that was a good transition right there. The charity was... Uh, she sent it to me here. Oh, here. The Haiti Earthship, um, the Biotecture Planet Earth, a register, registered 501c3 nonprofit organization in collaboration with Earth, Earthship Biotecture and Greater Good International is building the first hurricane and earthquake resistant Earthship school in Haiti. So it's a, it's a charity that means a lot to her and that's where all the money will go. Um, it's going to be quite the scene. Justin Gaethje, Chandler, as of right now, minus... Yeah, I think Gaethje's like minus, minus 210. Minus, minus 210. 210. And Chandler plus... All lines, obviously, courtesy of DraftKings. You know? Yes, absolutely. Our good friends over at DraftKings. Uh, Justin Gaethje hasn't fought. Thank you. Uh, over uh, a year ago was his last fight. Uh, he has drawn the ire of one Daniel Cormier. I mean, Cormier pissing everyone off with his homerism. <laughs> the uh, Islam Makhchev fight, it was a little much, if, if you ask me. Uh, Quarantillo, Burgos. Let's see. Uh, oh, you know what? This is an interesting one. Marlon Vera, Frankie Edgar, yeah. minus 175, plus 145. That's a close one. I mean, there's some spicy lines out there this week. I, I've already been been doing some research. I, I kind of like that Chandler Gaethje not to go the distance. Yeah. I like Quinta the dog. Ooh, in New York. I like Quinta, plus 150. Interesting. Alex Pajera, minus 255. What's Ian Gary? Ian Gary, minus 365. So uh, a big favorite there. So yeah, there's... there's uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good lines, man. We'll get into it on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, before I do go, I got to give a shout out to my guy, uh, Base Binge. Um, I like giving the shout outs to the people. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Used his winnings, treated his girl to a lava cake <laughs> after half price app at Applebee's. So we're just, wow. I mean, we're just coming up in this world uh, culinary. Wow. We got we got the guy getting the air fryer. I mean, <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting it all. Now we got lava cakes at Applebee's. Lava cakes are great, by the way. I mean, like a good that's one. That's a luxury. That's, that's a luxury. You get the half price apps. The waiter, the waiter, waitress comes by. Do we want to do dessert? Girlfriends, she's thinking no. She's thinking there is can't no way we're this. doing dessert. Hold on. We got some winnings today. We're going with the lava cake. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Curious said he wrote Appies. I don't know if that's the cool way to write it, but. Uh, uh, I think he was probably so hyped up about the lava cake. He forgot the L.A. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing worse than ordering a lava cake and it doesn't like melt. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it just needs to be hot off yeah, the press. like a, a true molten lava. Like it just go. Yeah, pours I and mean, you can expect that quality at Applebee's. You can. You they can. Don't, they're not going to turn you wrong. I mean, a, a free plug for Applebee's here. Maybe they could be a sponsor. <laughs> Eating good in the neighborhood. Mind. That great commercial they play every single commercial during uh, during yes. football. Yes, there's a. Oh, I thought you meant uh, the UFCs. There's a couple of UFC commercials that they play over and over and over again. The UFC, the the one that I randomly get over and over is the uh, Home Depot commercial in Spanish. It comes what? Out blue. Yeah, on I Plus, swear, on ESPN Plus, every card that I watch, I get really? it a couple times. Yep, the Home Depot. Uh, That's commercial. bizarre. I've never gotten that. Wow. I wonder if it's based on your uh, your your <laughs> your viewing habits. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's the story uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> You'll give us uh, 268 picks, and perhaps, I mean, there's a lot going on, like I said. Yeah, we got Bellator. Bellator, sure. Bellator Burks. Yeah, a couple Irish uh, yep. a couple Irish favorites that I like. You got to feed the beast there. And, uh, you know, if you want to dabble on, uh, you know, Brave CF55 or LFA 117. Always reaching with what, what, you, know. you find me the lines, I'll, I'll find a way to bet on it. <laughs> By the way, I, I don't know if, you know, good friend of the show, best fight odds. They put up some great friend of the show. Yeah, they they put up some crazy odds. Like I see here, ACA one thirty one. Like who knew that was even a thing? Caposa knows, but you know, EFC ninety also a thing on uh, November six. So As, I still have never seen any glory lines. No glory lines. Yeah, someone hit me up with a uh, with a site for it, and they were not on. There. Not there. All right. No. Um, all right. Well, great cause. By the way, what's the website where if people want to donate? It's Movember.com. That's it. All right. I'll put it. I'll put it on my Twitter account, though. I got a page. We, we made the goal five hundred for the month. We're, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit that. Five hundred. We're gonna crush that. 
we're gonna hit it. Have you I'm also running sixty miles? Mm. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, we're sixty miles over the course of November for uh, bury the lead. Yep. Well, that's not the lead. I mean, that's that's easy. Sixty miles over the course of a month, though. It's like two miles. a yeah, day. Yeah, that's two miles a day. So you'll do this every day, or some days you'll do a little more. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's connected to my Strava app and everything. So wow. Yeah, get it done. And what does that like? What does that do for November? It's suicide prevention. Men, sixty men kill themselves every hour. Wow. Really. Yep. Holy smokes. Yeah, it's a good cause, man. Yeah. I like doing it. Plus, I mean, I look great with a mustache. Come on. How many years have you been doing this? This is like my fourth or fifth year, man. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. Could I ask what prompted you to do it? Uh, I think I just wanted a mustache one year. And Respect. then, I, you know, uh, you and asked me at lunch today, why the mustache? Yeah. It starts the conversation. It does. Yeah, November, throw a couple dollars away. How does the girlfriend feel about the mustache? She loves it. Okay. She loves it. She won't tell you otherwise. Okay. <laughs> no, she was on FaceTime with me as I shaved. She was like, please. Oh, my it. gosh. The beard was good, man. It was, it was good. It was good. Well, it will grow back. Uh, and by the way, you shave the face. Oh, yeah. We're going to keep this bare okay, face gotcha. all, all November. Okay. We'll get it back in December, though. There he is. GC. Uh, all right. We'll check in on Wednesday. Sounds good. There he is. Uh, hoping his Braves can pull it out Tuesday or Wednesday. And, uh, I, you know. We have a connection, you know. You know, Carlos Cruz, my boy. You know, we're tight, but you know, I don't want to see the guy happy. I mean, things have been going really well for him with his uh, Georgia Bulldogs and with uh, you know the Braves doing so well. So let's see if they can pull it out. Big week of sporting action. We got uh, the Knicks Raptors tonight, uh, November first, nineteen forty six. First game in uh, BAA history, Basketball Association history. And now 75 years later, to the day, they will meet again. Although they're not meeting in Toronto, which seems weird, because that game, I think, was in Toronto. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was in. No, I think it was in Toronto. Maybe I'm wrong. Maple Leaf Gardens? Anyway, Ozzy Shetman. Look it up. He was the first man to ever score a point. Uh, of course, UFC uh, 68, 268. I was looking at uh, Casey writing to me, Ghost Rose, probably the only person outside of Houston rooting for them. Uh, Bellator, like we said, a lot going on in the world of uh, football and hockey. But dare I say, no moment in sports bigger than the one that is about to occur right here and now. It was June of 2018. I signed off for the final time from this chair. I mean, there's been a lot of emotional moments in the last few months. We've been through all of them together, but we got to add another one to the list right here and now. We signed off, and the final guest on the program, guest, not a real guest because he was working on the show, but in studio was our old friend, New York Rick. Now, afterwards, we said goodbye. We had the fist bump. In fact, I do think we have that moment right here and now. Not yet, not yet. We're not ready for New York Rick just yet. Yep, all right. Uh, there it is. There's the moment. The fist bump. And we said goodbye. I said my goodbyes. And I went off to the worldwide leader in sports. Now, uh, he did not stick around and followed me uh, for several months and was just kind of, you know, hanging around. And then eventually got the opportunity to run the ESPN MMA social handles. Absolutely crushed it, uh, in large part due to the work of Tessa Hirsch. She was just kind of, you know, the uh, the second wheel, if that's even a term, uh, riding her coattails. And uh, very recently made the decision to join the winning team over here, back on MMA fighting as the new social media director. I hope I got that title right. And so now he is back, and the beauty of him being back in that capacity is that he can be back on the show. And so without further ado, Frankie, hit now my music. To open up your ears and your minds. Bit of a MMA late start fans, there, Frankie. Bit of a late start. Rick's picks. But we'll let it slide. Rick's picks. Rick's picks are lots there it of is. And his hair is Joe, you can bring the chair. It. You there he is. Oh, my God. Look who it is. Look what the cat dragged in. Look at that ponytail. I mean, holy smokes. Uh, it's good to be back, I'm still listening to the song. Just give me a second. And we even had the, uh, the doot, 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 doot. The, uh, the... What was that? The 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 beeping, the car, the oh, yeah, you remember yeah, that? The garage music. Who made that song? Mike Heck. Mike MMA Heck. Fighting Zone. Prior to joining the team. Just uh, at the time, somebody um, who we spoke to a lot in the Rick's Pick segment. Um, I believe he's producing radio at the time. Guys, um, I mean, let's. Not, what's going on here? Sorry to interrupt the story. New York Rick sporting 
1984 Argentinian soccer ponytail. I mean, it looks like he plays for, you know, Inter Milan. I mean, what is going on here? The beauty of this situation is... <laughs> <laughs> the media, yes, tell me. Tell the media of the situation is I had not seen this man yeah. since UFC 248. Were you at 248? I was at 248. Was Israel Adesanya, Adesanya versus Joe Romero. The last time I went to a UFC event in person, the last time for a very long time that I was in Las Vegas. That was the last time I saw you. Yeah, and that was the last time I had been there until past July uh, for Connor's fight. Um, I hadn't been July of the following year of the following year. Yes. I hadn't been there uh, since the March. Yes. I, I have to admit, I thought we had seen each other. Honestly, no. we talk a lot. Shows how much it bothered you. We talk a lot. Um, I thought I had seen you, but yeah, I really haven't seen you in person since March. Well, let me tell the people, because I don't know if you know this, it's a very uh, bare bones operation here. So I have to tweet everything. Maybe you could take over in this regard. You know, I since might be able to <laughs> help about that. We'll see. Um, so here he is. Now, what have you been doing the last, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the I last six it months. For, oh, no, the last six since I left. Like, what has life been like? Because I'm assuming yeah. it was just a nightmare without um, me over there. I will say, look, there's a certain level of content that you bring. There's a certain Thank level you. of um, consistency in terms of, hey, we know uh, every single week we're going to get the top interviews in the sport, and and that's something that uh, was missed when you were gone. Uh, but the train kept rolling at a certain point. The train point. kept rolling. This you guy. You know, um, look, no. Uh, what was it like watching yeah. the return of the show? Be honest with us, the return of the show, and you weren't yeah. a part of it. First time in, uh, you know, since 2012 that I was hosting the show and you were not a part of it. First time since 2012 that you and I hadn't worked together. That's First time since 2012 that you and I didn't work together, yes. Because done. even when I left, you were still, so let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. When I left and did the show, you came. Now, initially, they didn't want to hire you, right? They, they were just letting me hang around at They a were just letting point. you hang around. Yeah. And they let you stay in the back. What was it, sixty-seven Columbus or something like that? Yeah. And they let you. Ha and and credit to our boss at yeah. the time at ESPN. After the show, the first show came in and said, "All right, we're going to make it happen." Because my advice to you was just show up. Yep. And this is good advice for anyone out there. Just show up, flex your muscle, let them do their thing, but flex your muscle a little yep. bit. Let them know what they don't know about the show because you had been there in the control room for what at that point six years. Yep. Let them know the ins and outs. It's a different kind of beast. And I think you, I wasn't back there, but I think you made your presence felt and then you got the gig. Now it took a while, I think, for it to actually happen. Yeah, things move a little bit differently at a company right. like ESPN. Um, but I think I was able to provide some value back there and just my knowledge of the show and interacting with you, obviously. Right. Um, Crust First kind of stayed alive for a little Crust bit first, there. I forgot about Crust First. Yes, it was a thing. And they tried to take it out of, uh, well, of our hands. Yes, they did. Um, they did yeah. But it stayed alive for a little bit back there. But no, um, credit to, to Glenn Jacobs, as you mentioned, um, provided value to that. But truth be told, like they have a lot of people on that production staff that were producing your show. That was not probably where I was best suited. And then I found... You want it out. It was you social. said, I have ridden this train long enough. I want off. Not true. And then I had to go to bat for you on the social media <laughs> side, put my reputation at stake, put my integrity at stake. And uh, it was you a gotta, gamble. Now, I have to say, I remember I was in Milwaukee. I had just come from interviewing DC for E60. Yes. I went there because it was the final Fox show and he was there and that was the best time to interview him. It was December of 2018. And I'm in the airport talking to your eventual... Yes. next boss and i'm giving the hard sell as to why you should be the man to run the espn i mean i'm not trying to give myself the old barry horowitz here but uh and I, in the back of my mind i'm thinking i don't even know if eric's actually done social media in his life i don't think he has and yet here i am giving you the hard sell in the end it worked out uh you were right i hadn't i hadn't done it professionally <laughs> at that point well you um, did your own account with two thousand yeah. followers you know, <laughs> I mean, that's always the funny thing about the to. social media people. They all have no followers. There's no time. Right. I've learned this. I right. used to judge that. I used to think as somebody on the outside, why does this person who's a social media expert right. not have any followers? I've learned. I've since learned. Okay. It's just hard to sustain. You're, you're locked in on this full time. If you're doing it at the level that we were doing it at, shout out to Tessa Hirsch, as you right. mentioned. Right. Uh, and Cal Dansby, uh, my two yep, yep. Uh, direct reports over at ESPN. Um, love them to death. Uh, so yes, at the time, nothing, zero. Like professionally, knew nothing about it, knew nothing about the principles. Were you freaking out? No, because I knew enough about MMA was my feeling. And also fortunately, Tessa Hirsch, who was my partner in crime at that time, uh, knew so much about that. 
knew so much about the principles of social. Also, Katie Daly, who you're referring to, um, what, uh, they had such a system built that if I could bring the MMA to the social, they could make that work. And I think it paid dividends, as we can see. It's an interesting thing. I'm trying not to name names. You're just naming all the names. I didn't know, you know, I didn't want to completely break the fourth wall. But if you want to name the names, go ahead. Nothing wrong with these people. I just didn't know if they want to get involved in this, <laughs> you know, mess of a situation. Um, and then, you know, we have a great run, two years. Um, two years, well, so that's 2019. By the way, one of the highlights was, and no one will ever remember this at this point, except for probably us, the two people who ushered in the ESPN MMA era, yeah. the, e the UFC on ESPN era, MMA era was us. It was us. We were doing a show on December 31st, 2018, and they let us sign off on the Helwani Nose Award show, right? At midnight. At midnight. And then the next thing was like top 20 UFC knockouts yeah. or something. We were the ones, not Dana White, not Chuck Liddell, not Conor McGregor, not Khabib. It was these two schmoes. I wish I had the clip right now <laughs> saying the era starts out. They can never take that away from us, no matter what. All the text messages you want to send me about how you got me out, no matter what, history will state that these two jabrones were the ones that ushered in the new era. I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm also proud of that. Now, I, I was said, you know, we'll do this whole segment. We'll talk about the yeah, awards. Yeah, I got right. 10 seconds at the end. You got, I don't but, know what happened there, to be no honest. No matter, well, uh, TJ and Henry Cejudo were on that. They went and they were Well, they were, went long, but they were giving good stuff. They were, they were yeah. on together. I mean, those interviews yeah, yeah, are, yeah. are golden. Um, but yeah, it was, I popped in for 10 seconds, and at midnight, the uh, UFC XESPN era started. I remember, shout out to Edward Kim on uh, Twitter here. He's saying that you're rocking the Diaz attire, the all black. Always. I mean, it's a little bit rebellious of you, renegade of you. So that was fun. So that was 2019 to 2021, of course, June of yep. 2021. When I left, I mean, I'm assuming the mood changed. I'm assuming like the will to work changed. It just wasn't the same. Now tell me, you're watching the show. It comes back. You're not a part of it. I interrupted yep. you. Must have been weird. You did give us a couple of assets though, a couple of Poirier clips, a couple of things. I mean, that was nice. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to say that you were trying to put over the show. Yeah. News is news. I mean, news it, is news. First show was a big show. It was a big Dustin show. Dustin talking for the first time in a while. Um, that was appropriate. But no, I mean, my role at that at that point was to treat it the same. Like, if something is happening in the MMA space, and to, to ESPN's credit, they never told me, like, don't do this, do this. Right. So at that time, Dustin Poirier is the biggest interview in the sport that's going to happen. Um, that, was, that was the coverage. As far as... Me personally, yeah, it was weird. It was a little bit weird, as I said. As you know, I said you and I had had worked together at that point consistently for eight plus years together mm -hmm. in, in a row. There was there was no lag. There was no break in that point. Um, so for the show to come back to see this set, to see you sitting in that chair, to to know that you're crafting the promos about coming back and all this stuff, uh, it tugged at the heartstrings. But I was proud. I was happy to see the show back. The show meaning you in that chair, this show. Um, I was happy to see it back, and uh, I was just a fan at that point. And it was nice, honestly, it's nice to be a fan sometimes, but uh, I would much, I prefer, I would much rather be involved. Now the question that I would get repeatedly since my departure and since you stayed yeah. on, was um, the lack of credit and the lack of tagging that I would receive on the uh, the website. So let's clear the air right here and now on the social media feed. It was a lot of MMA journalists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, come on. What was okay. it like when you were doing that? Tell so, us. Tell so us. there's a few things to unpack here. Yes. Courtesy-wise, the policy mm -hmm. is... <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this. Is, this is to so uh, credit the outlet. Mm -hmm. at you... Did, because of the the nebulous nature of all the different relationships you have, if you look at your Twitter bio, it looks like uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot going there's on. There's a there. lot. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot there. Um, because of that, there wasn't one outlet that you were pinned to, to necessarily sure. or providing your coverage to. So I think in our dot coms writing of the articles, which is where we take a lot of our um, info from, from the newswire, from our uh, the website. Uh, you were attributed as MMA journalist. Now, can they not just say my name? I mean, like, do we need the title? Again, I think still feeling <laughs> this out, I, figuring <laughs> out. But now, why no tag? Now, tag yeah. in, in, in ESPN's ecosystem, which I understand and can appreciate at, uh, as somebody who is working in it, the tag is for the talent that is on staff. Mm -hmm. So if you are Ariel Hawani that works at ESPN, you get the tag. Yeah. If you are Ariel Hawani who works for MMA Fighting, BT Sport, so your own right, sub stack, right. yada, yada, um, then you don't. 
that's that's it. So that's how you differentiate and uh, elevate the talent that is there. As an example, you see on the MMA fighting page, there's tags for Ariel Hawani. Sure, it's uh, beautiful. AK Lee had a great tweet over uh, on Saturday man. that gets a via. I just feel like everyone should be tagged, you know. I, don't I know think this is a, not your call and you don't have to necessarily answer for it. I'm not it. defending it yeah. necessarily. I'm explaining the legit, the, the, the It was very controversial. It. A lot of people would send me, look at them, not tagging you, not tagging you. <laughs> uh, I mean, even I, even Virna walking out to Island Boy, no tag. I mean, uh, come on. I mean, she's the only reason wait, she's walking what? out. What? Oh, oh, oh. I mean, give an the, HT. Okay, give a hat oh, okay, tip. Okay, I mean, okay, come okay, on. Okay, okay. I mean, come on. Uh, I wasn't sure where we were going. There. I got it. I got it. You know it. what I'm saying? Um, Spread the love. Now, can we confirm that you made this happen? Do we do we have the receipts of like you saying like make what happen? The island boy thing. Do we have the receipts of like Yeah, we have the freaking show. What are you talking about? Like Were you not watching last week? You're going to go out to this because I said if anybody goes out to this. Yes, I did this on the okay. show. Were okay. you not watching? <laughs> I just want to make sure. What are you talking about? I did it on the air right here and now. Uh, exactly like at this time last week, I said if anyone walks out to Island Boy, you'll be immortalized on the wall. And she or her representation texted you and said, like, we are going to be the ones to do it because you said this. Yeah. Because, okay, great. Well, why? Are you, are you starting to... Uh, I'm not oh, doubting you're starting, you. You're starting to... Wait, oh, wait, you think she walked out to Island Boy because she found the song and liked it? Listen, if she likes Island Boy, Get she likes Island here. Boy. Um, see, this is the ESPN in you that we need to beat out a little bit. I mean, golly. <laughs> if you think that she walked out to Island Boy and it wasn't because of me, Virna Janji I mean, Robot, I mean, how dare you disrespect um, her? Tiago Akamura, her manager... We have to give credit where it's due. I do think the Brazilian beast had a little bit to do with it. Guilherme Cruz, he might have put it on their radar. Yeah. But this was up for grabs. This was a rebound that, was, uh, you know. was another contender, right? Who? Uh, ultimately... Yeah, it was Andre Petrovsky who completely fumbled the bag. Yeah. Uh, he got in there. He made the request. He was late. But it was too late. He yeah. got denied. The UFC said, the UFC, people don't know this, uh, they only let, like, you can't have multiple people walk out to the same song, which I kind of liked. That would be a little weird. True. Yeah. They, that was huh. the the reason. Someone already requested. Makes sense. Beat you to the punch. Yeah. Now he could have been sly and gone with the original because this was the remix. <laughs> a little, maybe a little too much Island Boy on, yeah. on the broadcast. What do you think of them no selling it? I mean, they all knew. Here's the thing. They couldn't do reference. they? Do they? You don't think DC knows? I mean, actually, I know for a fact DC knows because oh, okay. I told him. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, he couldn't um, say anything. He couldn't say anything. Yeah, it's it's hard to lean into. We do have the the picture. We have the picture here. Thank you, Jedi. Oh, oh this picture. Je there it is. Jedi Goodman on the wow. spot. I mean, he's pretty much... Can you hire Jedi Goodman as a member of the social media team? I mean, the guy is just... Oh, I don't I know mean, what he does. Day, it's day one, and I'm already <laughs> making hiring decisions. Look um, at this. This is us. But Jed does do a tremendous job. This is us kicking in the year. Yeah. Uh, Look at that I shirt. Could, you really got dressed up for I the occasion. I could up a little better today, but you know what I was thinking, actually? No, I mean, this is great. I was thinking... It's very NWO-esque. You I actually look like beard. Sean Waltman. Circa. Bit, but what I was thinking was... Um, I was like, oh, I need to get a haircut. I need to get a beard shape. Not a haircut, like a trim. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking to myself, this is home. What do you do at home? You kick back. You, don't, you, yeah, you, you, you take, don't come you in put a on suit, the sweatpants. You, know. you take like this is home. This is where I need to be. Like the beard, take me or leave me. Like the they, the relationship. You don't have to impress here. anyone. A lot of people are still here. Some new faces. Oh, Alex, Joe. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, that was almost the the best feeling was seeing the the faces, seeing you come in the door as well. Like. Um, but I said, it feels like I've been gone for 10 years and 10 seconds simultaneously. Um, it's, it's an interesting feeling, but uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy to be back and I'm so happy to, to talk to the people. And now we'll tell us, because you're not yeah. coming back in the same role. No. Uh, um, you are not technically working on the show, but you work... Yeah, my involvement with the show is going to be producing social content, social clips, and making sure that the show gets the best representation on social media that, that we can possibly do. Um, and uh, yeah, popping in from time to time. You know, you're working with Jose and Alex on Jose the and fighting Alex, side. Um, Here I am trying to get you to. Oh, Casey as well. Wow, geez. Uh, we can't forget Casey, who's another familiar you. face. I never, <laughs> I never. <laughs> Jesus, Barry. I love, uh, Casey writes me stuff all day. He's gonna write me um, something in the next ten seconds. I bet you. I've never had the pleasure of working with Jose or Alex before this. Casey, obviously, I have a long relationship with from MMA fighting, um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I've seen um, I've seen Jose around the events because I travel for the events. Jose travels for a lot of the events mm -hmm. and, and uh, know him in that capacity. Always a friendly face and have hung out with him many times. Uh, but I'm looking forward to working with him consistently, and I'll see him in New York this week. Was the last time you were in the studio the last day? That's it. Wow. We, we had the cake. We had, we had your box Brian of Tucker tchotchkes made his appearance. And, uh, Brian Tucker was here. Yeah. We had your box of tchotchkes that we yeah. took down to the yeah. cars. Danny Segura helped out. Danny Segura was there. Um, and that was it. 
that was the last did you time stick I was around there. did it was there like a post party that i wasn't invited no, to no there was a very awkward kind of departure of uh, me being like you know see you guys part and parcel like yeah. see, see you later um but uh yeah that, that that was it but it all happened over email um but uh this was it i have not been back here i've not seen the grain of this wood these bobbleheads although these some of these look like some uh, of them are new from the newer uh era a lot um, of them have then. been here since some of these have been, like Chael, you know, the round five ones have been here since the AOL yes. days. Jose Aldo, all these behind me, all these down here, these guys down. I mean, this, this Wheaties from, box has seen better days. The Wheaties sure. box, I mean, so has Anthony, <laughs> you know, like it's just, uh, it's an unbelievable thing. It is, it is, uh, but there's no studio. Like, th look at this studio. Yeah. We didn't have this studio. I mean, let's be honest. We didn't get this kind of studio. This is, this, it, yeah. Look at this desk. This is the real, this is the real deal. Uh, not only that, but it's it's yours. It's it's for you. It's custom. It's it's yours. This this is all mm -hmm. the Ariel Hawani MMA Hour experience. So it's great to have you back. Thank you. Uh, why don't we do a little mini crust first here? Yeah, let's while do you're it. Here. I'm ready. Um, who was the MVP of Saturday in your opinion? Was it Glover Teixeira? Yeah. Was it Piotr Jan? Was it Islam Mahachev? Or was it Hamza Chemaev? Sentimentally, it's hard to say it's not. Glover, 42 years old, getting it done with the title. But I think the most lasting impact, the most lasting effect of anything that happened on Saturday is going to be Hamza Chemaev continuing to absolutely dominate. Every single time he fights, it's step up. It's going to be a step up. He's not going to be able to pass the test. And he obliterates the test. And I think that will, no matter what, this, this four-fight run will be viewed as one of the legendary starts to a UFC career of all time. Conor McGregor up mm -hmm. there with that. Um, so he just continuing to build on that. The titles are going to come, go. For, I mean, for Jan, it was, it was one, one title defense and, mm -hmm. and gone. Uh, for Glover, hopefully a long title reign, would, you know, best of luck to him. But the things that will be indelible are what Hamza Shamayev has been able to do and continued on Saturday. And this was a mauling to take a guy the like Lee. Order and pick him up yeah. and slam him and yeah. choke him out while talking smack to Dana White is just legendary stuff. When you consider the fact that he had been out at that point for 13 months, that he got COVID, that it was bad kind of COVID, that it was hospitalization yeah. kind of COVID. That Surgery. It was, yeah, uh, uh, freaking uh, retiring, spitting yep. up blood. Um, he had surgery. He had a... Uh, Jeez, I mean, or really? something serious. Because of the COVID. Yeah, uh, Holy smokes. It affected him badly. Coming back. And doing that to Lee, who's no slouch, who's coming off a knockout win over Santiago Ponzinibbio, and now they try to book him with Nathan Diaz. Because you know this is what's happening. Uh, he's going out there. He's calling him, hey, let's go gangster this. They're yeah. trying to kill off Nate. And no one wants to see this fight. This is part of the game. Like, I guarantee, if Nathan Diaz, prediction, if yeah. Nathan Diaz re-signs with the UFC, and I don't know if he is or not, mm -hmm. but if he comes back and calls him today and says, hey, guys, let's do it. Four-fight deal. I want to finish out my days as a UFC fighter. Eight fight deal. They are pulling that fight from the table. The only reason they, why they want to make Hamza Chemaev versus Nathan Diaz is because they want him to look bad on the way out. This is old school pro wrestling mentality. Unfortunately, in this world, and unfortunately for Nathan Diaz, you, well, no, you're not a part of the, the, the plans, right? I mean, you're going to get beat up on the way out. Yeah. This is just a bad style matchup. And the thing is, it's not one of those fights where the world is asking for it. They're not mm -hmm. on a collision course. More people are interested in Tony Ferguson versus Nathan Diaz. Diaz is in a special category at this point where it's like, we just want him to be in fun fights. We don't want to see him get mauled. Completely. Um, I will say this, though. It's in line with what Nate Diaz has been recently kind of campaigning for. Now, I'm not saying Hamza Chimaev in particular, but he's looking for the tough fights, right? Like, Leon Edwards is not the guy who's a walkover. No. Gilbert Burns... Uh, Vicente Luque. These guys are the top, the cream of the crop, right. the top of the division. Um, I consider Hamza out in that class, even though Ferguson his ranking not. doesn't reflect it. Ferguson, not fair. Um, but he's been asking for tough fights. Again, I think you know UFC is kind of the one who's going to dictate whether they want to give him tough fights or not. They, they'd be inclined at the moment to give him those tough fights. Um, but I don't think Nate, Nate Diaz would be not up for the challenge. I don't think Nate Diaz wouldn't look at that as a test, as, as something to potentially conquer. Um, but I prefer, I am not, I do not personally want to see that fight. I prefer to see a fight like Tony Ferguson. I Tony think Ferguson, that is the Vicente fight Luque, that makes a ton of sense. Luke would be great. Luke is the same as Hamza to me. It's, no. it's, yeah. 
Okay, style-wise, is not going to take him and pick him up and throw him it's, around the it's cage. It's not necessarily about style for me. It's about it's about where they are in their careers. Vicente Luque is the guy who's knocking on the ti- on the title door, and I think Hamzat's soon to be that. There's I still think some that's... dudes ahead of Vicente Luque. I mean, Leon Edwards still isn't even in that spot and <laughs> beat Vicente Luque, for God's sake. How is that possible? Yeah. How is Leon Edwards? I mean, I love the fact that Islam's like, nine in a row, give me title shot, and yeah. here's Leon Edwards, who's no. unbeaten in 10, he can't, and he's he fighting can't Jorge Masvidal. He can't hop Leon. No, how can anybody hop Leon? Let's, yeah, Leon has a win over the guy. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough. But no, I mean, look, if they do that fight, am I going to turn away? I'm no, going to watch course, it. But and, I just, and I think Diaz is game enough to, to maybe one day just be like, eh, I had enough, I'll take it and just fight it. Um, maybe to get out of the, the contract quicker. Um, but no, it's not the fight I want to see. Tony Ferguson versus Nate Diaz is the fight for both those guys. Absolutely. The problem is Ferguson's a 55er, and they don't really like to bump someone up. They don't. I don't give a crap. I don't think Tony's going to care much. It's a great fight. I don't give a crap. That fight in Anaheim would have been great. That fight anywhere would be great. In Vegas, it would be great. Who knows where the March pay-per-view is. It would be great. Um, But this is how the sausage is made. People thought that I was campaigning for it. I was like, no, watch. And I was hinting at this weeks leading up to this fight. Oh, you want to fight out your deal? You want to go fight Jake Paul? You want to go try to make money? On Showtime or anywhere else with Jake Paul, yeah, God bless, here's the wolf, who's just a terrifying individual. Uh, another guy who's terrifying is Issam Makhachev, and now the Absolutely. hot debate is, all right, he says title shot. Yep. He could fight Poirier or Oliveira today, and Absolutely. that's going to be a great fight. I'd love to know what the line is for that fight. But here's the thing. Oliveira, it's, it's confusing, because let's say Oliveira wins, and let's say Chandler wins. They're not going to do Oliveira Chandler too. Mm-hmm. So then maybe... In that Islam case, Islam them. has a chance. Let's say Dustin wins and Chandler wins. Then you probably do Dustin Chandler because they have history. Let's say Dustin wins and Gaethje wins. You don't do it because they have history. Hmm. Dustin beat him. So? Yeah. All right, fine. I would do that. Okay, fine. Then, so so there, I almost think it's impossible to know what you're going to do with Islam until Gaethje Chandler this weekend or and or uh, Poirier Oliveira. But then we, we forget about Benil Dariush. Yeah. And... Honestly, the fight that should probably happen is Dariush versus Islam, number one contender fight, and see how it goes from there. I agree with that. I think that is the Both fight to managed make. by the same guy, though, and historically... Yeah, tougher to make that matchup, right. certainly. Um, I think that's the fight to make. I wouldn't have a problem with, after it plays out, Islam potentially sliding into that slot if we get a Chandler... Uh, after what cha- plays out? After this weekend's fight right. between Chandler and Gaethje yeah. and uh, December... Uh, plays out as right. well. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with Islam sliding into that if it ends up being Oliveira and Chandler again as the collision course. I'm okay with Islam fighting uh, Oliveira. That makes sense to me. I'm okay with that. For the belt. Why not? And no Dariush. Listen, I mean, we're, we're <laughs> that, those days are gone. If, what, if, the meritocracy yeah, days? Yeah, the meritocracy days. When's the last time we, we even had that? No, I know. It's a weird one. Islam Oliveira. The hype is behind Islam. Could you imagine? I mean, I don't even know what the line would be for that one. I think Islam might be favorite. I mean, we got a guy. Yeah, GC, what's the line on that? Um, I, there is no line on that. Uh, but I, I do think that there's uh, there's a chance, given how great he's looked, he's the favorite. Now, what's interesting about that is how good Oliveira is on the ground as well. So, But the strength that Islam it's... has is just unbelievable. Yeah, the, the thing that Habib and... And Islam and a lot of a lot Hamza. of the Dagestanis, Hamza and others, Chechnyan, but um, a lot of the, the fighters with this style do is they don't give you opportunities for that submission game to really come into play. It's it's really not um, it's not really uh, the counter to the wrestling as much as like a tool to have in the back pocket and, and a card. But man, those guys are very hard to stop. I imagine that Islam would hop Dariush if that if the scenario that we're outlining plays out. But I also think that's the one scenario where we have that. Um, kind of concern. If Dustin wins, I think both uh, Chandler or Gaethje is a, is a very viable opponent. Yeah. That Gaethje fight was a long time ago. No, Gaethje has done a lot since. I think those both those fights make a lot of Someone sense. Someone said to me, like, oh, but even if Gaethje wins, how can you give him a title shot? He'll just be one win removed from the title fight loss to Khabib, lest we forget Colby Covington. Yeah, th- there's that. There's also the fact that um, he was also holding a belt um, before that fight against Habib, and also Habib has mauled everybody. That that doesn't, and he's now out of the equation. I don't necessarily hold that against Justin. Of the three top fights at 268, Usman Covington two, yeah, Zhang Wei Li Rose Namunas two, Gaethje Chandler one. 
Which one are you most looking forward to? Uh, Rose and Zhang. Really? Because I didn't see enough in the first one. That's um, true. I, I love all three of those fights. Do not do not get me wrong. Uh, Gaethje and Chandler is, I mean, the, the matchmaking in that is fantastic. Everybody's been clamoring for that. They've both been clamoring for it, for that. They're talking about taking each other into, into the dark places and this and that. It's a great fight. I love it. Uh, the main event, one of the best fights. Um, that we've seen in the last couple of years, uh, completely evenly matched. I will say, I think Kamaru has advanced a little bit more than Colby has in that time, or we haven't seen really Colby in that time. But I did not get what I needed out of the first fight. Rose's moment, tremendous. Glad it happened. Glad she has the belt. But I think there's more for that fight to show us, and that's what I. So you were in favor of the immediate to. rematch, or once I, it was made, you once it's of, made, yeah. I'm on the train. I think Carla earned that opportunity. Yeah. I think she deserves it, but I'm not. I don't think that uh, this is. Uh, Outrageous! It's 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 a great no, fight, I and I and it. I would like to see it play out um, one more time and and see what that looks like. Now, we and and I think we can look to recent history, or maybe not so recent history. Joanna, right? Rose played out where she dominated that fight, and then we got a a much better, more competitive, mm-hmm. exciting fight um, out of the second one. I think we'll look toward that again. If not, if Rose comes out and wins definitively, or if Zhang comes out and wins definitively, now you're setting up a fantastic trilogy. Um, I'm excited about that. No, I mean, forget, it's, it's like Colby and uh, Usman, same thing. Yeah. Obviously, I thought Leon deserved it, but once we're in there and getting a chance to see those Hard two to beasts fight, of course, that's going to be a great fight. I think Kamara Usman and probably Israel Adesanya are the two guys who have been, Masvidal in 2019, but Usman in particular, ESPN has really gone behind Usman. Yeah. I was going to say like the two guys who really benefited a lot from the ESPN era uh, Masvidal definitely has benefited from it, but Usman, like every every time he fights, like there's like an incredible feature on him, and they've really done a great job of telling his story. And I think he has come a long way. I think he's the best pound for pound fighter in the sport right yeah. now, um, especially with no Habib in the mix, no John Jones, of course, as well. So this is a bit. I mean, with Ian Gary making his debut and I Quinto returning, um, Marlon Vera versus Frankie Edgar is tremendous stuff. It's a great card. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'll be covering for wow. MMA fighting. They let you in the uh, building? Letting me in. Um, yeah, this card is one of the best in recent memory. This stretch of cards, two, 267 was... I mean, and I mean, before that, it was a pretty bad stretch. But this Undoubtedly correct. 267, 268, 269 yeah. is... 269. And 270. even 270. Yeah, I Francis mean, we're and at, Brandon Moreno. At a title unification and heavyweight and, and a great trilogy fight. That is... And by the way, I joke about like the thing, like we have to say, I have to say, you have said, but I have to say like a lot of people gave me the chance and you the chance and they didn't have to at ESPN. Yeah. Like, you know, Katie, Glenn, like they didn't have to bring you initially. Glenn didn't have to bring you. She didn't have to listen to me. Katie didn't have to listen to me. So there's no hate here. I mean, I joke, yeah. but they know how I feel about them. They know how I feel about them. There's no hard feelings whatsoever. Uh, I wish they would stop calling the other two shows new. I mean, it's been five months at this point. They're not new anymore, the promos. But all that being said, there are no hard feelings. And I actually really do appreciate because they didn't have to do that. Like they yeah. could have told you to kick rocks at well, the beginning. I think our experiences are so different at ESPN, right? You're coming in as talent, as somebody who's going to provide so much content and value to the to the brand that they know that coming in. That's why they hire you. Um, I'm coming in as somebody that's never done the social part before, so that was somebody taking a, a risk on me. Huge. Um, somebody coming in to try to assist with something that they already had staffed up and production people for, to say like, hey, I can provide some value to this, giving me that opportunity. So I'm coming in, hat in hand, saying like, let me try to help, and I think I can, and I, I believe I did. Um, so yeah, the, the, for me, the, the ride is different. They gave me opportunities and gave me uh, experiences and roles that I was able to reward um, them for. Um, but you had a different experience and different what was the highlight? What was the, 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 the best event, the best moment? Oh, what was the peak? I will. My favorite thing is, uh, Yoel Romero. Oh yes. Telling Phil Murphy, go, the go, the go speech, incredible. because that happened in the apex in a back room. Um, that was the last event that I went last to. that we went to. Uh, nobody knew it happened. It didn't end up on YouTube in, that version because there was he was speaking so much Spanish, so okay. it ended up like on I believe a, a, a different platform, different channel. But we were able to hear about this moment, clip it, make it happen, and, and it went off and went viral. Um, I was very proud of that. My my personal highlight, maybe like the thing that I was most proud of that I did was, and <laughs> I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, was I put together that K1 
Kevin Holland talking smack to opponents highlight. Oh, that was that a good one. Really yeah, that was good off one. And, and but I may have almost like steered in the direction of like now Kevin Holland has to live up to this expectation uh, no. and it like kicked off this series of events. Don't get me wrong, I think Kevin Kevin Holland's going to be talking, but it really like shined a, sh- shined a spotlight on that and it became the narrative of yeah, like this is what Kevin Holland great. does and it became a thing. Um and then he ended up losing to that was Brunson? No. Brunson, yeah, Brunson then Vittori. So Brunson. Um but man, Kevin Holland's such an exciting fighter. I was so I, and I, and I, I told this story at the time. I remembered him making his debut against Tiago Santos and talking smack to Tiago Santos, who was a light heavyweight, um, even though they were fighting a middleweight, who's a light heavyweight now, uh, and just thinking that this guy is absolutely crazy and insane, and then following the career from there and saying one day we need to revisit all mm-hmm. of these fights that he talks smack on, all the way back to Contender Series. Um, no, it was that, great. That, that was, was a great one. A lot of great moments. You guys did a great job. Uh, you made your presence felt. And, uh, I mean, it was great to see you in that corporate environment, way better than I am, uh, in that corporate environment. And, uh, no one writes an email like you in that corporate, I mean, your email skills skills? are fantastic. Speaking of emails, uh, this is, uh, one of my favorite parts of the program and the history of the program. We go back now to December of 2011, December 14, 2011. Can I interject for one second? Why, why? We literally did this in- we did June. it, yes. Yeah, we did it when I left. But it's now, it, that was a sad reading of the email because we thought we would never work together again. And now here we are, reunited, and it feels so good. Yes. Can we say, though, at yes. that time, this wasn't a thing. What like, wasn't a thing? Th- this coming back, being reunited. No, like it wasn't the a thing. There was it nothing. Was, Ariel it was, was done. Going, yes, we were done. I'm on this train with ESPN. and Now, um, was it a thing in the back of my mind? Perhaps, but it was, well, there, it was I, not in the works. And I've told you this many times over the years. I got into this sport. The one thing I said when I got into this sport, when I sent this email that you're about to embarrass me with, was I want to work with you. I want to work with Ariel Hawani. Um, that was the thing. It wasn't necessarily like, I want to be an MMA person. I want to be an MMA writer. I didn't know what I wanted to do in MMA. But what I knew was, you were the best in the business. You were doing what you did uh, for MMA fighting at that time. Or uh, AOL? No, it was, it was like, we, we were about in, to make this transition. Yeah. Yes, SB Nation had just bought MMA fighting. And I was thinking, I want to work with Ariel Helwani because I want to work with who's the best in the industry. That was what I was, uh, I didn't know what skills I had, I didn't know what it would end up being, but that was my goal. And so that goal has never changed in that 10 years. Like, I, I, the primary thing was, if I can work with you, that's what I'm always wanting to, to do. Uh, 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 even though you're a bad team, a bad teammate, as as people say. Right. Oh, thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, weird though, right? All the people <laughs> yeah. that have stuck around and um, wanted to, yeah. But I've always wanted to work with you, and so that continued. But at that time in June or May, mm-hmm. June, yeah, June. Um, that was not the plan. The plan yeah. was keep, stay here, here, and I'll miss you, and hopefully that was see the you last again. pod that I did over there. <clears throat> And so without further ado, let us just revisit this email. Can I stall off? Before, uh, before we say goodbye, it is entitled, I'm a New York native looking for an internship. Help me, Ariel. Exclamation point. It was desperate. It was December 14, 2011, 4.54 p.m. Mr. Helwani, I am not sure if this is the right avenue to contact you, but I couldn't find another email address and I don't have a premium account on LinkedIn. Good thing you didn't go there because I never check it. So I'm giving this a shot. I'm a 24-year-old New Yorker, so this is 2011, 10 years. You're 34 now. Well done. Turn 34. Two kids later, by the way. Well done. I'm a 24-year-old New Yorker who is currently interning at Gawker Media, and that stint is coming to an end. Why was it coming to an end, by the way? Uh, I had been working there. The opportunities there were like, you can apply for stuff. There was nothing I really wanted. I really wanted to, if, if at that time I would have gotten an opportunity with Deadspin, I probably would have stayed on, mm-hmm. but that was not uh, happening. Smart move. I have nothing lined up for the immediate future. So I'm taking the advice I've seen you give in multiple interviews and going for something I want. As an avid MMA fan, I follow the sport daily, including your Twitter videos and NBC slash AOL articles. That's how old this is. Oh yeah. I believe you are the premier journalist in the sport as evidenced by the awards. Enough ass kissing though, very nice. And I, and you just happened to run the MMA hour from my hometown. I want to be a part of it. Any part of it. I'm willing to work unpaid. I've already graduated with a degree in marketing from Baruch, so I don't need college credit either. Imagine that, work for free <laughs> to simply be involved. If you need any more information or a reference from my previous employer, 
at Gawker Media. I'd be more than happy to provide that. I appreciate the time, and I hope to hear from you. Eric Jackman sign underneath signature, twitter.com slash wheezy but geeky. Yeah. Facebook.com, your name. LinkedIn, yeah. your name. Is the LinkedIn uh, updated or what? Shoot, that's a good question. I don't think uh, so. I can't even. LinkedIn, I'm sla- I'm, I'm sl- I slack on. It's not. So actually. I sent this to some people. Brian Tucker, Chad Mom sent it around. Chad Mom. I yeah. Mean, sent talk the, about giving opportunities. Shout I out. I mean, a bunch of uh, people are on this. I write back. You sent the initial at 454. I write back at 517. And by the way, an, the other misnomer put out about me that I don't respond to people <laughs> and all this bullshit. I respond to everyone. Yes, if you write me, right. I respond to you. Hey, Eric, nice to meet you. I just sent your email to my employers. Unfortunately, I don't do the hiring, but you seem like a great get for anyone. I will let you know what I hear back. Good luck and keep in touch, Ariel. P.S. Thanks for the kind words. I mean, what a mensch reply. One of the all-time mensch's replies. Okay. So then we have a couple of things here. A yeah. couple of things here. I'm not going to go into all of uh-huh, this. Uh-huh. But then a reply within the hour at 5.59 p.m., December 14, 2011. Ariel, I'm geeking out like Marcus Brimage meeting Rampage right now. I wasn't expecting I was. any response. No commentary on you. I just know you're a busy man and probably get tons of random emails every day, let alone one this immediate. Wow. Words can't express how appreciative I am that you even took the time out of your day to make a single fan feel like anything is possible. Even if nothing comes of this, I understand that it's not entirely your call and ultimately a bureaucratic process. You'll always have a fan right here. Can't thank you enough, Eric Jackman, all the stuff. All right, how about this? Then I wrote some other stuff. My pleasure, I've been there before. I mean, it's just like mensch move after. (laughs) I actually responded, this is crazy. You sent your email at December 14th, 2011, 5.59 p.m. My response was at 6 p.m. Yeah. A minute later. Crazy. Uh, and then here comes Chad and all these other people yeah. saying, let's meet. And then uh, actually, Chad writes it. Ver- the guy, I sent it to Versus as well. And they said, unfortunately, we don't have anyone, uh, yeah. <laughs> any, any, any room to add anyone. How about that? Um, Big mistake, Versus. You'd still be around if you hired NYR. <laughs> um, a few things that we, we have to color this. Postscripts? Real, real quick. Okay. Uh, the reason I said, I don't know if this is the right avenue also, because I sent it to your Jerry, Jerry Park. Jerry Park, yes, email, that's right. Because um, you... I couldn't find your email online. Uh, yes, you respond to everybody. I, I didn't know this at the time, obviously, because I didn't interact with you, but um, I was I was geeking out because I was like, oh, wow. That, I didn't expect this to happen this quick. Like, I was hoping, of course, hope of hopes, but uh, what a mensch. Um, it happened very quickly. And I remember thinking, uh, I remember sending it to my buddy who was an MMA fan, and I've told this before, Victor Ma, shout out. Um, and we were just so excited that, like, if nothing else happens, we have this little email chain forever that I'll just remember this happened uh, on December 14th and I'll tell you about how much I love Marcus Brimage and Rampage's interview. I, I, it was either happening that night or it had just happened. It had just it, happened. It had just when happened. You, when he was on the Ultimate Fighter finale. Um, and uh, yeah, I had it forever. And now 10 years later, here we are. Crazy. With a stop in Bristol, now back, yeah. you're doing another role. Here's uh, Sean Alshadi weighing in. Uh, Eric's embarrassment is everything right now. I mean, people are loving this. This is great stuff. No, um, I have to say, I'm getting hardened to it after every well, no, I mean, subsequent it's great. iteration. A.K. Lee is appreciating the shout out. I mean, everyone's loving it. Can I ask you one thing? Yes. Are you concerned that every time we read this email, yes. that more people are just going to start being, emailing me? Emailing you. It doesn't happen that often, believe it or not. Not to yeah. say that I have any sort of roles to give out, but that, I mean, you talk about good timing. AOL had just sold it was all timing. this. Uh, we were literally like building this new studio yep. and we needed new bodies. Needed somebody. You're no. carrying plexiglass on the subway <laughs> to build the studio on 34th Street. Like the timing couldn't have worked out. And also sometimes you get the email and you could kind of tell from the email, like, okay, this isn't really going to work out. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but in this case, it worked out. It worked out. I will say, uh, don't offer to work for free, anybody. Like know your value. Yeah, like dumb. like uh, I mean, work, work for your money. Um, but yeah, like reach out to people. Like you never know. It's, it's, just it's not me. Practice. Um, just yeah. not Ariel. Like, he's, I, I'm he's too busy, off. like you know, helping these guys. Yeah, out. he's he's dragging me along. Like he's he's got an anchor already. Well, this has been fun. Um, so, will you be here every Monday and Wednesday? I hope. Wow, non-committal. Here's the thing. I mean, there's a lot to do. Two kids. Two kids. Yeah. So what? So, I have three kids. Well, somebody's got to pick them up from daycare. Like sure. we'll see how long the show. You know, oh, okay. we got to we got to work out the timing and okay. things. Shows also, going like long. social media, like. There's a lot to do. There's a lot Who's to do. Who's cutting clips of this moment right now? Uh, Jose? Nobody. No, okay. we, can, we can leave this one on the cut. That would be floor. great if you cut a clip of your own return. I will not, I will not be doing that. On the feed. That would be very uh, meta of you. 
uh, Tessa Hurst weighing in that uh, she will not be giving me the hat tip on the uh, the why. I mean, I expect nothing less from my old friends. Um, being honest, but we love you, Tessa. And we wish you the best. Right? It's going to be great for her. This was awesome. This and was great. I'm very happy to be back. I'm so happy to see you again. I really thought I had seen you. Um, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to work for MMA Fighting um, in a very official capacity when previously that was not the case. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about what we're going to do on social. So if you're not already following, don't even worry about the New York Rick handle. Don't even nah. uh, follow that. Follow at MMA Fighting on Twitter, on Facebook, and at MMAfighting.com on uh, Instagram spelled out. Follow those. And as the great Thomas Wolf once wrote, you can go home again. You can. And it feels can good go to be home. home. Oh, it feels good. Reunited and it feels so good. And with that, let me put my headphones on. Frankie's very, I don't know if you met Frankie, but he cracks the whip back there. I did meet Frankie. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing crew we have back there. And dare I say, the crew has only gotten a hell of a lot stronger now. They can't stop us now. Who's going to come after us now when we got New York Rick? Whew, whew, whew. Who's coming after us now? I mean, golly. Uh, Frankie, we are out of time. You can hit my music. Oh, he did it again. He messed up. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm like wondering if Rick is going to say anything. He can't hear. That's good. <laughs> He played your music. Was that was that the that Rick's was on picks? the nose? Oh, that was on the nose. I mean, do you want to label the songs? Maybe that would be an easier way to know what should go when. You could label them. You could be like on the nose. Hey, shout out to Mike Heck. He did uh, he did the Rick's pick song. He did the on the nose song. I think your mic is still on, by the way, because I hear an echo. Frankie just kind of. I mean, talk about fumbling. You and Andre Petrosky need to hang out. <laughs> I guess I'll just put off being called Frankie all the time. I mean, that's your name. Is it not your name? No. It's okay. Frank, Frankie. I mean, it's, it's, a, such it's, a, great song. it's a term of endearment. Um, in any event, we are out of time. It's been a great day. I mean, reuniting. I mean, we've only been here two months and a half. And look at the stuff that we've accomplished. I mean, it's unbelievable. Great show today. People really popped for that Dan Hardy interview. Great stuff from great. Hardy. Spoke from the heart. We wish him the best. Thank you very much, New York Rick, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You could speak, by the way. I think your oh, mic is still on. Unless, myself. unless Frankie, did you cut his mic? He's still on. He's still on. There you go. Uh, it was great. Actually, it was five years ago, uh, yesterday, that uh, New York Rick 30 hosted. seconds. From yeah, I, I, it's okay. We're good. Five years ago yesterday that uh, New York Rick hosted when uh, I was out. Uh, paternity leave. My daughter turned five. Yeah. She was born five years ago, uh, October 28th. In any event, thank you, Peter Yan, Aljamain Sterling, Dan Hardy, Anthony Smith, and everyone who joined us today. Of course, Lerone Murphy as well. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. I'm out of here.